Rooney on Talk Radio 1210 WPHD. Henry, I have a question for you. I don't think it's a difficult question, but I've been wrong before. It happens rarely, but it's been known to happen. Is it too much to ask to come in here one weekend with you on the Matt Rooney show and not have a new war? Uh, You're asking for a lot there. We like busy news cycles, right? It gives us something to talk about, something we will pine on. We come on here, we talk, we do our thing, we have our shtick. But a new war every weekend, it's contributing to a little bit of uh, exhaustion here in the studio. How so? You look positively ready to fall over any moment now. Do I? I I feel good today. Do you feel good? I do. Now, for those who don't know, producer Henry Machette, he always has a very neutral expression on, so it's very difficult to gauge how he feels. That is correct. It's by design. So today, I I guess that you looked a little bit weary, like you might have had a busy weekend. And I could be wrong. No, I, I definitely uh, was out there this weekend. But you know what? You I were feel, out there doing your thing? Yeah. You know, I was celebrating the birthday as uh, Rich Zioli implored me to. It was your birthday. On Thursday, yeah. It was your birthday on Thursday? Uh-huh. How old are you, Henry? Too old. What's what's the age that you stop saying that to like people? What what would that be? The age that you stop asking people what their not, birthday not, is. Not the, asking, the, you stop the, telling. The you age know? you stop honestly answering. Yeah, is what you're asking. Um, I would say probably once you turn thirty. Okay, so now there's anything wrong with being thirty. There's a lot wrong with being thirty, but right. go, continue. Right, but I think that's when people stop celebrating. Okay. I, I already stopped celebrating. I just turned 25. So. Oh, you know what, Henry? On behalf of everyone listening to the program tonight, boo, who, who, that you're 25. I feel no old. one feels bad for you, Henry. Sorry. I feel bad for me. Oh, that's, <laughs> you're disgusting. Someone's got to do it. I, I do not feel bad for you. I do not feel bad for you at all. 25 is a great age. You've got your whole life ahead of you, young man. Yet it feels like it's already over. You've got at least well, that's because you you're you're living during the Biden administration and every week we're threatened with World War Three. Yeah, you know what? That's that, why it feels like life is slipping away. It's always in the back of the mind. It'd be like, oh, Yes, man. Who is Joe Biden gonna pick a fight with next weekend? <laughs> you can't be blamed for looking at the world that way. But in all reality, you probably have plenty of time left to go. I'll I'll sing happy birthday to you tonight. You got pipes? Uh no, I don't. But I'll sing it. You can either have normal Matt Rooney singing happy birthday, or I can do it in the form of a very bad Marilyn Monroe impression. Oh, uh, you know what? It'd make for good content. So I want to want to hear your Marilyn. Okay. Let me have a little more caffeine. Yeah. Please. And then you can look forward to that a little later in tonight's <laughs> program. By the way, for those of you listening to our private conversation, I always forget we're on air. Welcome to the Matt Rooney show. On 1210 WPHT, every Sunday night, 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard. I am the aforementioned Matt Rooney, joined once again by the indomitable Henry Machette, our producer here on Sunday nights. Welcome, Henry. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Very full program, as you might expect, given that once again, thanks to Joe Biden, we are at war. His weakness, more on that in a moment, has given us yet another armed conflict, which moves the needle just a little bit closer. To World War Three, and you know, I'm I'm trying to inject a little humor into this entire enterprise because we know that unless we laugh, we cry, right? But the stakes are the stakes are high, and it truly is not a laughing matter. And we're going to dissect this to the extent we can over the course of the next three hours. We'll also be joined in hour number two tonight because we have three. They're crazy enough around here to give us three hours. Jack Chitterelli. You've heard of him before, even if you're on the western banks of the Delaware River. But over in New Jersey, he is now beginning his third campaign for governor in the Garden State. He failed to win the Republican nomination in 2017. He finally got it in 2021, but lost a surprisingly narrow fight with Phil Murphy. This was your classic 
mainstream media. I I I I, <laughs> I was about to call it higher education, but we know that there's nothing elevated about the post-secondary education system in this country. But it was a classic mainstream media collegiate polling institute snow job where we got poll after poll telling us that Phil Murphy was up eight points, nine points, 12 points. Lo and behold, Jack Chitarelli ended up losing to Phil Murphy by only three. What if the polls had been honest, Henry, and we had been told that it was actually a close competitive race? Well, maybe more people would have showed up to vote because they would have thought that there was an actual difference to be made through their participation. Maybe more national groups on the right side of the aisle would have invested in the race. Who knows, right? Now we'll never know because Phil Murphy got a second term and it's a term that's done and visited lasting damage on the Garden State. But Jack Chiarelli's trying again. And he will join us tonight in our 8 o'clock hour to discuss his launch, which happened this past Tuesday in Freehold out Monmouth County, New Jersey. We'll also get his take on the events overseas and whatever else we have time to discuss here on the Matt Rooney program. 855-839-1210 is the number should you wish to call in and participate if you have something worthwhile to share with class. You can also check us out on the Odyssey app and you can watch online to confirm that I am indeed as handsome as I sound on YouTube. Head on over to youtube.com backslash at 1210WPHT. That's where we were broadcasting. Streaming, I think, is the term this evening. And I think we're going to stream the Jack interview, too, if we can figure it out. It's all on Henry, and if it doesn't work out, it's Henry's fault. I, I think I remember how to do this. It's, it's like think, riding a bike, you know? It is like riding a bike. Once I get back on, it'll... I'll figure it out. Or you might fall off and scrape your knee, get a cherry I, on your knee. And I might fall off. Cry. But I know the next. I, there's only one thing that can go wrong in my head right now. And that would be the time I'd fall off the bike. Otherwise, I'd get back <laughs> up and I'd know how to ride it after that. Only one thing can go wrong with this well, program no, tonight? No, I don't like the way the equipment's been behaving in the past week. So You don't like the way the equipment's been behaving? No, I never what is that? Do. What does that mean? I swear these things have a mind of their own. The phones stink. The board stinks. Computers, just another pain in the butt. The equipment's been acting up on you. Yes. That's what you're telling me. Correct. Interesting. I don't like the sound of this, Henry. None, none it's too much. Just, that's just working here. I don't, <laughs> it sounds, <laughs> it sounds day, bad. WBH yeah, it day. sounds bad, but that's just the truth of the matter. All right. Why? Well, I, I have faith in you. I, I have boundless faith in you that you're going to figure it out before the end of tonight's program. And we are going to have a smooth sailing through all the news of the week gone by to prepare all of our listeners and viewers for the week ahead. Again, 855-839-1210. Now, obviously, this happens every week when I come on here for the program. I put a tremendous amount of effort into preparing for all of you. I curate articles. I review clips that I find online, or maybe I have heard first person on the news and I send it all on a sheet over to Henry and I'm very proud of the program that I I've put together and then something happens case in point Iran decides to launch its first ever direct attack on the people of Israel we know that for years now decades even Iran has like the cowards that they are attacked the nation of Israel through proxies that's how they function they are the bully that won't stand up to you one-on-one. -on -one. They get some other bully to come over and shake you down for their lunch money. They don't want to do their own dirty work. So they've operated for years through Hezbollah and the Houthis and these other organizations that they fund. So finally, Israel decides, well, you know what? If you want to play at that game, we're going to go after one of your terror merchants. And now Iran has responded by going directly at Israel with, and we're not just talking about a few small rocket launchers. Israel, unfortunately, is very well accustomed to dealing with barrages of rockets raining down on Jerusalem and other high value targets in that most harassed of all countries on the planet. No, there were ballistic missiles and drones getting lobbed at Israel over the weekend. And thanks to a combination of Israel's military experience and know how. And, of course, some help from the United States, the United Kingdom, and I guess Jordan, too. 
they're estimating somewhere around 99% of the hardware that got thrown at Israel's direction over the weekend was intercepted. So it could have been much, much worse. It could have been something much along, more along the lines of what we saw back in October. So, you know, thank God for small favors, I guess. Right? And, and if you hear hesitation in my voice, I, I think you know where I'm going with this, that once again, we have a completely avoidable conflict that we must now grapple with. We must grapple with it. Our allies have to deal with it. Innocent people are going to die as a result of it. The world is less stable because of what's happening right now in the Middle East. And 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 why why is it all happening? It's happening because Joe Biden signaled to Iran, not on one occasion, not on two occasions, but multiple occasions since he took office back in January 2021, that Iran had nothing to fear if it decided to get hot and heavy with American allies in the Middle East and beyond. And I mean, I can give you a little bit of history if, if you need it. I, you shouldn't at this point because it's all in the public record. But in 2021, I distinctly remember Joe Biden standing on the White House lawn. And he said that he was, and this is a quote, pleased Iran has continued to agree to engage in discussions in direct discussions with us and with our partners on how we move forward and what is needed to allow us to move back. What that means, I couldn't even tell you, but what matters is that when you're dealing with a country like Iran that only understands strength, they immediately sensed weakness in this man. And their initial impression of Joe Biden was further validated when President Biden decided to issue a waiver to allow the transfer of $6 billion in previously frozen Iranian oil revenues that had been blocked by United States sanctions. And we've got the audio tonight of Biden administration flunkies and apologists and surrogates and talking, talking heads saying, oh, well, you know, it was supposed to be for humanitarian purposes. So to try to lay any of the recent aggression on President Biden's feet, that's that's completely, completely unfair. Well, maybe that makes sense if you're approaching these issues with the mindset of a foggy bottom, educated foreign policy wonk that has never lived in a part of the world where you were constantly under threat from a nation state like Iran. But that signaled once again to Iran that they had carte blanche to behave how they wanted in the Middle East without serious threat of repercussions from the world's only remaining superpower, the United States. They could get away, quite literally, with murder. And then to make things even worse, you'll recall that Biden, his administration, made the decision to lift the terrorist designation for this Iran-backed organization known as the Houthis. And they alleviated sanctions on violations of U.S. oil in Iran. And the country's economic growth spiked by about 4%. Again, what about any of this would lead you to believe, if you were Iran policymakers, that the United States intended to exact serious consequences on you in the event that you misbehaved or that you behaved aggressively towards U.S. interests or allies overseas. Now, we arrive at October 2023 when another Iranian back group decides to launch a terror attack on Israel, which couldn't have been pulled off given its scope and size and everything that went into it without the direct sanction of Iran. Countless Israelis tortured, killed, raped, murdered, displaced from their families, right? And what is Joe Biden doing on the eve of this bombardment from Iran? He was, as of just a couple days ago, telling the Israelis 
that they needed to ease up on their efforts to exact punishment on Hamas for orchestrating this October 2023 terror attack, a massacre perpetrated against Israel and Israel citizens, Israeli citizens. Can you imagine another country telling us in the aftermath of 9-11 that we needed to go easy on the Taliban and Al-Qaeda over in Afghanistan? We wouldn't have listened. Why should we listen? American citizens had died. We were under attack. It was a declaration of war. Now, after this weekend's bombardment, notwithstanding all the lip service from the White House concerning willingness, alleged willingness, to stand up and protect Israel and to stand within Israel in this difficult time, we now have word that President Joe Biden has signaled to Benjamin Netanyahu that the United States will not support any retaliation against Iran. So Joe Biden's weakness created this conflict, created the opportunity for Iran to engage in this extreme violence against the United States ally. And now that that violence has been visited on the people of Israel, Joe Biden is telling Israel they can't do anything about it. Do you think that encourages or discourages Iran from persisting in its current course of conduct? You do not have to be a foreign policy whiz to see how this ends up. We are on the brink of a third world war because of one weak man. That's what the United States presidency means for the globe. That position, when it's occupied by an Abraham Lincoln, a Ronald Reagan, a Donald Trump, dare I say, amazing things can happen, not just for the people of this country, but around the globe. When it's occupied by a feckless weakling, one who also happens to be thoroughly corrupt and on the payroll, his family, of foreign interests, something for which the evidence continues to mount, the destabilizing implications for, again, not just this country, but everyone around the world are nightmarish. And you are witnessing this nightmare play out live on your televisions tonight. So it's not my goal tonight on the Matt Rooney Show to depress you, I promise you. We're going to get real. We're going to walk through the facts. We're going to examine the ins and outs of what's happening now overseas. And we're going to make sure in the event that you're listening to this program tonight and there is a shadow of a doubt in your mind as to what you should do when you walk into that booth, that voting booth in November 2024, that that shadow dissipates, that it goes away. Because we are no longer, as I often say, just talking about tax brackets anymore when we debate things between Republicans and Democrats in 2024. We are talking about the very existence of our civilization, whether or not we continue as the West to expand and nurture our values and see them bear fruit across the world, or whether or not we enter into a Chinese century. One in which what we're witnessing right now in Israel is, is but merely a precursor to much more carnage to come. It's up to you, the American voter, and I hope you choose wisely. We're going to try to help you tonight on the Matt Rooney Show. 855-839-1210 is the number again over on YouTube, youtube.com backslash at 1210WPHT. Let's take a break to caffeinate, play some ads, make some money, and we'll be back to kick this show off in high gear on 1210WPHT in just a moment. Fraudulent tax returns due identity theft increased by 30% in 2023. If you're in a bind this tax season, LifeLock can help. Their U.S.-based restoration specialists are dedicated to helping solve identity theft issues, and all plans are backed by the Million Dollar Protection Package, which means if you lose money because of identity theft, a LifeLock will reimburse you up to the limits of your plan. Help protect your information with LifeLock. Go to lifelock.com and save up to 25% your first year with my name, Clay, as your promo code. 
Did you know one of the best investments you can make? It's in yourself. At My Computer Career, in just a few months, you could start your new career in the high-demand, recession-resistant field of information technology. Isn't it time you invest in you and start a career in networking, cybersecurity, AI, or upskill to boost your current IT career? So, get the ROI you deserve at My Computer Career. No experience necessary. Start now at mycomputercareer.edu. Financial aid is available for qualified students, including the GI Bill. Dawn Stensland here for a greener, healthier lawn. Call my lawn care company today, Natural Lawn of America. Natural Lawn has been creating green lawns quickly, more naturally, and with fewer weeds for more than 35 years. Their certified specialists tailor their treatments to your lawn's specific needs, reducing the need for chemicals and creating a safer lawn for your family and pets. Time's running out on Natural Lawn's unbeatable offer. Free seeding every year. 800 free seed, naturallawn.com. Greener grass, fewer weeds guaranteed. This is Larry Sinus with Investor Schooling. You may know me from my book, Money Hacks. You may know me from my radio shows. And you may even know me from some of these commercials. But listen, I'm teaching stuff that people need to learn about money. In fact, my favorite topic is money. So go to InvestorSchooling.com and you will learn things about money that you never even knew existed. We will teach you things about real estate, about the stock market, and about how to use your IRAs properly. Go to InvestorSchooling.com and sign up for a complimentary class this Thursday night at 7 o'clock. That's InvestorSchooling.com. This is Larry Sinus with Investor Schooling. Are you tired of hearing about the recession that's coming? Are you prepared for it? Well, listen, at InvestorSchooling.com, we're going to teach you ways to prepare for the recession that you didn't even know existed. We're going to teach you strategies on how to use real estate. We're going to teach you strategies how to use the stock market properly. That's right. You can even make money in the stock market when the stock market goes down. Hey, go to InvestorSchooling.com and register for a free class this Thursday night, and you will learn all of these techniques. Go to InvestorSchooling.com right now, RSVP for this Thursday. We'll see you there. Your 401k goes up and down. That's fine when you're 40, but not when you're 60. Find out how to protect your hard-earned money. Tune in to The Retirement Spectrum with Alan Cohen. Saturdays at 3 on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. For a complete list of Talk Radio 1210 WPHT's contest rules, go to 1210WPHT.com slash rules. Get two hot dogs for the price of one on Hatfield Phillies Franks BOGO Night on Tuesday, April 16th at 640 when the Phils host the Rockies. Secure your seats now at phillies.com. Should be a big weekend at Citizens Bank Park when the Phils host the Giants for a four-game series Friday, May 3rd through Monday, May 6th. Order tickets now at phillies.com. In your journey back to work, we understand the barriers you may face. We have a solution to bridge that gap. No matter your background, PA CareerLink staff are here to provide personalized assistance and help you thrive. Take the first step towards a new chapter in your career journey with PA CareerLink. Visit pacareerlink.pa.gov or your local PA CareerLink office today. Paid for with Pennsylvania taxpayer dollars. If you're drowning in IRS debt and can't afford to pay, then you need to take advantage of special IRS tax programs that are available and free yourself from IRS collection efforts once and for all. Due to the financial hardship consumers are facing throughout the country, the Internal Revenue Service has made it easier to settle delinquent tax problems. An open phone line has been established by Community Tax for consumers to call and see if they qualify. Take down this number or store it in your cell phone, but call the Community Tax Helpline at 800-514-1020. If you owe back taxes to the IRS and cannot afford to pay them back, or even if you have years of unfiled tax returns, there's no need to fear anymore. But you have to call the Community Tax Helpline today at 800-514-1026 for the help that you need. Don't take on the IRS alone. They can attack your wages, savings, pension, home, and even your Social Security check. Call 800-514-1026 for your free consultation and to see if you qualify. That's 800-514-1026. Yo, 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 Roy is Ford. What? We know your favorite station is 1210 WPHD. WPHD.
Are you telling me something, Henry? Are you telling me to chill out? No. I came in a little fired up this evening. We're telling those other countries to chill out. <laughs> Take it easy. Are you imagining the Ayatollah singing this song? <laughs> Take it easy, take it easy. <laughs> Don't let the 99 versions drive you crazy. Just doesn't have the same ring to it. No, not quite. No, it doesn't. Even here on the Matt Rooney Show, 855-839-1210. Over on YouTube, youtube.com backslash at 1210WPHT. Gmail over on YouTube, because we have a chat, says go Israel. Now, I'd imagine that if we did a snap poll tonight, one you could actually trust, the vast majority of Americans would be supportive of Israel. But that's one of the weird, quirky things about the time in which we live. We know that there are plenty of Democrats, millions of Democrats in 2024 that are rooting for Iran, or at least rooting against Israel. And before you lose your mind and start screaming at your Odyssey app or at the YouTube app on your phone saying, Matt, how could you say such a thing? I mean, you don't need to take your old pal Matt Rooney's word for it, right? I mean, you've you've seen these demonstrations outside the White House. You saw the non-committed vote in Michigan, right? There is a large number of Democrat voters in 2024 that not only think that the United States is the great Satan, but believes that Israel is not a friend worth having. They are on the side of Hamas and the so-called Palestinians. It's a weird, wacky time in which to live. Can you imagine if it was 1942 and there were mass demonstrations outside the White House in support of the Nazis? Would have raised more than one eyebrow, wouldn't have? Well, that's kind of sort of what you have on the left side of the aisle. As we sit here today, it's weird, it's wacky, it's more than a little disturbing, and it's one of many things that Joe Biden is going to have to grapple with as he crawls towards his reelection campaign, the general election, which I guess now is in full swing, now that we have a presumptive nominee in each party, but his poll numbers aren't giving Democrats much reason for optimism. There's a new York, new New York Times poll out today. That is pretty grisly. We're going to dig into that in just a little bit here on the program. But first, I want to I want to pivot to some clips if I can. I, I clipped a ton of cuts or that I cut clips. I think I cut clips. I think that's the proper jargon. Every week, I try to add another one to see how many Henry can get done in a short period of time before the show. You did great. The answer is zero. <laughs> Henry's like, I got nothing. I got nothing for you. No, I know, I know you did it because there's no basketball in the booth this week to distract you. That's all behind us. Yeah, you know what? And the Masters just ended too. So. The Masters are done. Henry's got nothing. You're in the middle of a drought. Yeah. You're just hanging out until the Phillies disappoint us. Uh, no, you know what? The Sixers are up next to, in disappointment. And the Flyers, who knows? That's true. I skipped ahead by months in the rankings of yeah, today, heartbreak. Today was the last day of the regular season in the NBA. So, Yeah. So it's on for Sixers heartbreak and then maybe some Flyers heartbreak. Who knows? <laughs> it's like one really crappy soap opera. Yeah. It just it's the same. It, it is, it's like professional wrestling. It's the same thing every year. Yeah, right? I know it's going to happen. Second round exit. Yeah, exactly. Somebody runs out with a chair, game, hits your hero in the head. Game seven, something excruciatingly terrible happens that will live in infamy in this city. Yeah. No, you know. that's that's just that's just how we do. That's how we do in the city of 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 brotherly, not so much love. This is Cut number 10, back to Israel for a second, uh, because you're, you're hearing some talking points that the Biden administration is dusting off today and trying to disseminate to its allies, that this is a difficult situation over in the Middle East. It's, it's far too complicated for most of us mere mortals to understand, and that this recent aggression in Israel is something that Joe Biden, uh, he, he foresaw, right, and was doing his best, everything he possibly could. To stave off. Um, but we, we know that that's not true. And we have audio Evans. That's the study. That's a stubborn thing. About having audio and having an Internet, right? That when you say something, it lives it lives out there forever in the ether. This is Biden National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan. Right. A week before the October 7th attack on Israel. 
he stated, and I'm going to give you the quote, and then you're going to hear it. The Middle East region is quieter today than it has been for two decades. This is an interview with The Atlantic and Jake Sullivan. Listen up. And what we said is we want to depressurize, de-escalate, and ultimately integrate the Middle East region. The war in Yemen is in its 19 month of truce. For now, the Iranian attacks against US forces have stopped. Our presence in Iraq is stable. I emphasize for now because all of that can change. And the Middle East region is quieter today than it has been in two decades. That's an awkward brag, an awkward flex, Henry, given what followed just a week later and everything yeah, we've seen since. That's a tough look. Yeah, that's a really tough look. That's a tough look. But look, here's what it shows you. It shows you how disconnected the Biden administration is from reality. They're not in control of events, right? They were willing to brag about present conditions when there appeared, at least on the surface, to be a lull. But beneath the surface, there were sparks, sparks flying in the air above a tinderbox that was ripe to explode at any moment. Now, Flash forward, what, November, December, January, February, March, April. Fa flash forward six months. We have the terror attack of October 7th. Now we have the first ever direct attack by Iran on Israel. We're five minutes from midnight in the Middle East. And who does the Biden administration rely upon to try to calm everybody down and convince them that they're in control? Probably the most hapless talking head in the history of hapless talking heads. <laughs> John Kirby. And, you know, I have to laugh because even though I have no sympathy for this dude, when he's on air, he looks like he's he's um, in the midst of an uncomfortable bowel movement as he's trying to uh, get these lies out there and trying to to to, you know, I'm trying to be as as uncoarse as possible here, Henry, trying to lay them yeah. on the airwaves. And you can tell he's not comfortable with it. He's not happy about it. But he's doing this job because the guy's a bureaucrat and he wants to move up in the Biden administration, right. such as it is for as long as it lasts. That's that's the vibe I get from him. Like he's just this is just a job. Extreme like, discomfort, right? Yeah. Extreme discomfort. So this is for those of you keeping track. Let's see, Henry. Numbers are hard. Math is even harder. Uh, number eleven. This is cut number eleven. This is John Kirby on Fox News talking about. What I mentioned earlier tonight in my opening rant here on the Matt Rooney Show, Joe Biden's contributions to empowering and contributing to an emboldened Iran, specifically the $6 billion in frozen assets. John Kirby doesn't think that played any role in what you're seeing play out right now in your television. Listen. Is it not fair to say, though, that there have been moves by this administration that have opened up cash and other opportunities for them, which we know are fungible in ways that are not helping the Iranian people, but are benefiting the elites and people there who chant death to America and you, death to Israel. You and I have had this fungibility argument uh, before. Um, I obviously take a different issue uh, or take an issue with that uh, characterization. The the sanctions relief that has come about or uh, it's not even sanctions relief, but the uh, additional funds that have been made available to Iran due to sanctions relief program that the Trump administration put in place can only be used for humanitarian goods. It doesn't go to the regime. And the idea that the regime was somehow f felt like they were freed up to support these proxies because of that, it just doesn't comport with the facts. But they have been supporting these proxies for with, many, many years. And it comports with their language, though, saying we will use this money in the way that we want to use it. Yeah. And, it, and John Kirby doesn't have a good answer for that, right? Um, I mean, it, it, <laughs> you're walking down a street in Kensington. I don't know why you would be, but maybe you happen to be there. And somebody that's high on Trank asks you for a dollar, right? If you give that Trank addict a dollar, do you have any confidence they're going to use it to make a phone call or to buy themselves a cup of coffee? What do you think they're going to use it for? I got I, I have a hint for you. It ain't medicine, right? It ain't to, it ain't to save up for a Trump Bible, Henry, right? <laughs> it's it's to buy more drugs, right? You can't trust someone with compromised motives. And again, this is this is part of the problem that I don't know how you navigate around when you're dealing with the Democrat administration. These Democrat administrations are populated by 
lefty, elitist yuppies educated in liberal arts institutions that look at the world in such a different way that they can't understand how a North Korea or an Iran or a China or a Russia sees the world, right? They think, I truly do believe this, they think in their heart of hearts that Iran, its regime, right, the Ayatollah on down, actually kind of sort of have the same goals that the rest of us have, that they don't want their people to starve, that they they want to live in peace. I think that they're actually dumb enough to delude themselves into thinking that that is the state of play. When you and I know that it's not, right? We're dealing with monsters that have a prehistoric mindset. All they know is power, victory, win, and to make it even worse, they've got this toxic, bigoted mentality where they also want to kill Jews because they really do believe the Jewish people are somehow the enemy that are making their lives worse, right? It's sick. It's weird. We don't understand it because we're normal, adjusted people. But guess what? We're not dealing with normal, well-adjusted people over in the Middle East, right? I mean, yeah, they don't use Flintstone cars, but people that live in that part of the world that are making the decisions, that's the only way in which they can relate to us. Everything else about them, their mindset is 1,500 years in the past. This is all over John Kirby's head. If you need more evidence, here's cut number 12, in which he continues to defend the Biden administration approach, notwithstanding all the clear carnage that is a direct result of that Biden administration approach. Listen up. You know the conversations about unfreezing assets, about waivers on sanctions. Yeah, yeah. Could this administration have been tougher on Iran? Did it sense an opening? It, it's hard to look at what President Biden has done with respect, with respect to Iran and say that he hasn't been tough on Iran, that we haven't put uh, pressure on them, that we haven't addi additional 500 sanctions, but additional resources in sanctions. the region. And let's take a look at that ballistic missile. OK, so they launched more than 100 mm -hmm. ballistic missiles, and how many got through? And the reason it didn't get through was because President Biden made sure that we pre-positioned forces in the region to help Israel shoot them down. Uh, so this vaunted ballistic missile program of theirs didn't turn out to be so vaunted last night. why not support something have, that would have stopped that program, or at least contained it in some way, so it's not launching in Israel, and we aren't having to get it involved defensively? Again, so. Shannon, just look at the, the sanctions that we put in place against Iran. Look at the resources we put in this in the, into the region. It's hard to take a look at what President Biden has done, and say that we've somehow gone soft on Iran. It was the previous administration that decided to, to get us out of the Iran deal. And now Iran is so much dramatically closer to a potential nuclear weapon capability than they were uh, before, uh, before Mr. Trump was elected. Uh, you knew that they were going to do that, right? Somehow they got to work the orange man into it. When in doubt, I'd imagine, Henry, in every single Democrat headquarters, whether it be in D.C., in the various states and cities around the country, there is one of those do not break the glass in case of emergency boxes. And inside, there's just a piece of paper that says Trump. And if there's an emergency, you break it, you grab the thing that says Trump, and you just go on the TV, you go on the radio, you stand out there in front of the crowd, and you just repeat the orange man's name over and over and over again to distract from your own failures. This has nothing to do with Donald Trump. Last I checked, in the four years of the Trump administration, I think that that was the only presidential administration in modern United States history when we did not have a new armed conflict. Vladimir Putin didn't dare commit an incursion into Eastern Europe like he did during the Bush administration briefly and then during the Obama administration and the Biden administration. Putin didn't even imagine stepping a toe into Georgia like he did during George W. Bush's time in office when Donald Trump was in the White House. Why? Because they're afraid of Trump. They're not sure what he's going to do. If you listen to interviews with Kremlin insiders after the Cold War, they said the same thing about Ronald Reagan. Not the case now. Not the case now. But again, if you're looking for silver linings in all this, I think your average American that is sitting at home watching horror after horror continue to play out in succession on the television screen, I mean, it's hard to remember back to the 1980s, even if you were alive in the 1980s. But we know what life was like four years ago. And it was not this. It was not this. We, we shouldn't accept that this is life. Where every day, some bad guy around the globe 
feels they can behave with impunity because the man in the Oval Office ain't going to do anything about it is going to go on TV and lamely blame the man that came before him, right? And offer to give our enemies everything they possibly want and then feign amazement when those same enemies believe that they can continue to act without fear of consequences. Oh, give me a break. Henry, I need some blood pressure medication after this segment. There might be some in the cabinet. Break in case of emergency. <laughs> Zioli's Secret handprint stash. is permanently, yeah, yeah it's per, it's permanently imprinted on the wall. I think eight five five eight three nine twelve ten is the number. Again, YouTube dot com backslash at twelve ten w p h t. This is the Matt Rooney Show. One more break this hour. Be back to close out this hour in just a second. But don't worry, two more lie ahead. Back. I spray and scrub, but the soap scum in my bathtub is still there. I spray and scrub, but the burnt sauce on my stovetop sticks around. Sprays can leave grime behind, but new Mr. Clean Ultra Foamy Magic Eraser combines the scrubbing power of an eraser with the cleaning power of Dawn to melt away tough messes on contact. Just wet, squeeze, and erase. Stop spraying, start erasing, and clean with more magic than ever with new Ultra Foamy Magic Eraser. Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean. Hey, Dawn Stensland here. You've heard me talk about Chapman windows, doors, and siding. How much I love my new patio doors. You know by now, if I needed windows, doors, or siding, I'd only trust the Chapman team. If you're thinking of updating your current siding or removing your current stucco and replacing it with siding, think Chapman. With the new updated siding choices available, the curb appeal of your home will pop. If you currently have stucco, updating it with James Hardy plank or vinyl siding will truly add value to your home. If you're looking to sell, you can bet buyers will value updated new siding. And right now would be a good time to get ahead of the ball and plan your siding project for 2024. The certified Chapman installers are the folks you want on the job. If you or someone you know are looking for windows, doors, siding, stucco remediation, shutters, or hardware, give them a call or text them 610 431 8898 chapmanwindowsdoors.com. Chapman, the name I trust. Tell them Dawn sent you. Are you a victim of the timeshare trap and think there's no way out? I'm Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group, the original timeshare cancellation expert. And I'm here to tell you that there is a way out. All you need to do is give my office a call. I will send you a timeshare exit information kit absolutely free, explaining how the timeshare industry works and your options for cancellation. Call Wesley now for your free info kit, 800-790-1400, 800-790-1400. Diabetes, high blood pressure, anxiety meds, everyone's on them. If you're a 50-year-old male, maybe a bit porky, and you may even have type 2 diabetes, a million dollars of term insurance may only cost you about 200 bucks a month. Call Term Provider. Speak with Big Lou at 800-700-6898. Big Lou will find a term life policy for you even if you have type 2 diabetes, are overweight, or have high blood pressure. Term Provider has helped thousands of people like you who think they can't afford term life insurance. To buy a million dollars of affordable term life for you, all you need need to do is call Big Lou at 800-700-6898. Lou will make sure the scales are tipped in your favor. Call 800-700-6898. Big Lou will answer your call and work to fit you into a term life policy that you can afford. Remember, Big Lou's like you. He's on meds too. Call 800-700-6898, 800-700-6898, or BigLou.com. Pain in your knees, shoulders, hips, or back that won't go away? Check out QC Kinetics. No surgery, drugs, or downtime. QC Kinetics, 215-999-3000. Join us at Odyssey as we all do our one thing, together millions of things for our planet. Earth Day is April 22nd. A simple way to save water is to turn the water off when you are brushing your teeth or shaving. Only turn it on to rinse. What's your one thing? If you want jazz music, go to New Orleans. Bagels, New York. And for psychics, think California Psychics. You want the best, you go to the best. At California Psychics, home of free spirits and open minds, we know better than anyone what makes a good psychic. That's why we guarantee if your reading is life-changing, it's free. Visit CaliforniaPsychics.com and experience the joy of certainty. 
California Psychics. As an educator, Mr. Nelson's teachings are still being quoted in school. Education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. Mr. Nelson taught hope. Everyone can rise above their circumstances if they are dedicated and passionate. And giving our best efforts. It's always impossible until it's done. Mr. Nelson Mandela's teachings not only united a nation, they inspire us today. Inspiration. Pass it on from PassItOn.com. Calling on Blackwood to follow 1210 WPHT on the free Odyssey app. Download it now. Iran in this moment. Don't. Our American personnel and assets at risk, Mr. Mr. President? Mr. President, are our, our American troops at risk as well? We are devoted to the defense of Israel. We will support Israel. We will defend, help defend Israel. And Iran will not succeed. Thank you very much. Well, we sure you're a direct U.S. response, sir. Inspiring stuff, Henry, from your commander-in-chief. You know, thoughts and prayers for Joe Biden this weekend, too. The guy was, I think, on his 4,000th long weekend vacation in Delaware since he's become president of the United States, and he had to cut it short to come back and actually do his job. Poor guy. I know, right? Now he knows how I feel. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) You know, now you know what it's like, Mr. President, to come into the studios here at Odyssey, 1210 WPHT, and have to put on the Matt Rooney show. It's like working in a coal mine, Henry. 855-839-1210 is the number here on the Matt Rooney show. But, you know, it, it, a lot of vim and vigor from your, your old pal Matt this hour, because I'm more than a little ticked off about what's happening in the world. And the fact that, don't lose sight of this, this was all avoidable. This was all avoidable. We didn't have to to be here. If we had a real president, none of this would have happened. And that's a theme that former president and probably future president Donald Trump touched on this weekend. Saturday night, he was out in the Lehigh Valley, Henry, Shankville, Pennsylvania, speaking to a giant crowd of Pennsylvania voters. We know that the polls show that Pennsylvania is, yet again, the ultimate toss-up state for the 2024 election like it was in 2020 and back in 2016. If you're an undecided voter, if you're out there, and I, I suspect there actually are a few of you, listen to this contrast with what you've heard from President Biden during this instant international crisis and tell me, who who do you think would be more likely to cow the Iranians and our other enemies overseas not only the submission, but but more importantly, the threshold question here, right? Who are they going to take seriously? Joe Biden or, or this guy? Listen up. This is cut 14. Well, aspect of our country, they look at the fact that the world is laughing at our leader and laughing at us. And just four years ago was the exact opposite. We were the most respected country in the world. We were the most respected that we were ever respected. Nobody, we were never more respected than we were four years ago. It's no wonder Joe Biden and his thugs, that's all they are, their weak thugs are so desperate to stop us. They know that we are the only ones who can stop them. And all of this persecution of Donald Trump, I don't mind, I'm doing it for you. I'm doing it for you. (laughs) But all of this persecution is only happening. He's doing it for you, Henry. He doesn't mind. He's doing it for you. Look, you can can make fun of Donald Trump. You may not agree with Donald Trump. But again, take it from me. This is what connects with these dead spots overseas. Trump. And Trumpism is something they understand, and it's something they react to, and it's something which pushes them back into their corner. An old man that can't remember his name, let alone where he is at any given moment, right? There's questions 
about not only his incompetence, but his continence, Joe Biden, does nothing to convince our enemies overseas that they need to take us seriously, that they should respect us, that they should be careful about crossing us. <sighs> how, many, how many months are we left to go here? How many weeks before November? Can't get here soon enough. By the way, the latest polls, and I'll talk a little bit about this in the, in the second hour of today's program. We've got a new New York Times poll, which I enjoy when we get a new, a new New York Times poll because sometimes our leftist friends on Twitter love discounting the polling when it's from Rasmussen or some other conservative outlet that they can dismiss as being in the bag. In any other context, when it comes from a university, polling might as well be the word of God. It, it should not be questioned. You're tantamount to an election denier if you don't accept what the polling says. But this new New York Times poll is fairly devastating for Democrats as we inch closer and closer to that big day coming up this fall. And keep this in mind, too. It is Donald Trump up one point. And what do I tell you every week? Some are going to say, well, it's only one point, Matt. That's so close. It's a jump ball. It's too close for comfort. Republicans leading on the national ballot with the national vote translate ordinarily to a solid win in the Electoral College because a lot of that is California and the other blue states that are throwing the popular vote, right? If Joe Biden is winning California by 18 points, 20 points, 25 points, doesn't do him a lot of good if he's losing in Michigan and Pennsylvania, right? Wisconsin, Missouri, Arizona, all those other places. So you need to keep that in mind when you look at the polls. But, the, but this, <laughs> this, this particular survey is absolutely driving them bonkers. It's driving them absolutely bonkers. Because one of the things that this New York Times poll highlights is how there are voters that are now viewing Donald Trump's first term in office far more positively today than they were back when he left the Oval Office in January 2021. Remember, that's not supposed to happen. How many times have you heard someone say this on one of these Sunday morning shows? Well, Donald Trump's in trouble because who, who among those who voted against him in 2020 would ever consider voting for him today? That's one of the reasons they were able to discount him and say that he doesn't have a chance this next time around. Well, now it looks like some people's minds are beginning to change based upon what they're seeing on television, based upon what they're paying at the supermarket, what they are paying when they go and gas up their car. The horror, right, that's being experienced on the left tonight. We're going to talk about that and more in the second hour of tonight's Matt Rooney Show. We will also have coming up at 8.15 p.m. Eastern Standard, Jack Chitterelli, 2025 candidate for governor as a Republican in the state of New Jersey. You're not going to want to miss it here on the Matt Rooney Show, 855-839-1210, youtube.com backslash at 1210WPHT. Back in a sec. Don't move a muscle. Hey, it's Rich. It's the only take your lawn to the next level with the lawn care company I trust, Natural Lawn of America. Natural Lawn has been creating green lawns quickly, more naturally, and with fewer weeds for over 35 years. Their unique approach to lawn care reduces the need for chemicals, creating a safer lawn for your pets and children. Time is running out to get free seeding every year. Call 800 free seed or visit naturallawn.com today to learn more. Natural Lawn of America, greener grass, fewer weeds, guaranteed. This is Dr. Marianne Ritchie. Tune in to your radio doctor every Saturday afternoon at 5 here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT for the latest healthcare news and information because your health is your wealth. That's your radio doctor, Saturdays at 5. I'm Michael Toscano. Iran is facing blistering condemnation for its weekend attack on Israel with the United Nations Security Council meeting in emergency session. And Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's war cabinet is considering retaliation. CBS News correspondent Deborah Pata has more from Tel Aviv. A former senior Israeli diplomat to the U.S., Alan Pincus, told us that President Biden warned Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu not to retaliate, saying that he'd been told that if he acted against Iran, the U.S. would not stand by him. Pincus said that Netanyahu has wanted to escalate the conflict with Iran 
since November to detract from his political problems at home, including growing anger over his mishandling of the war in Gaza. The week will begin with the start of jury selection in New York for the first-of-its-kind criminal trial of former President Donald Trump. CBS's Chanel Call is at the courthouse in Lower Manhattan. Trump faces 34 felony counts of falsifying business records, accused of covering up a $130,000 hush money payment to porn star Stormy Daniels in the run-up to the 2016 presidential election. Scotty Scheffler is the Masters champion for the second time in three years. And now, Scotty Scheffler, people have been wondering who is the next star in golf, and maybe they just haven't realized he was here the whole time. CBS's Jim Nance taking it in. Scheffler closed with a 68 for a four-shot victory. He's the fourth youngest player to have two green jackets. April 15th, tomorrow, not exactly a day which will live in infamy, but CBS's Stacey Lynn reminds us of what we have to do. April 15th is tomorrow, tax day. IRS Commissioner Danny Werfel says he's been pretty impressed with how smooth this season has been. We're having one of the best uh, tax seasons we've ever had. And if you did wait until the very last day, the IRS has a new system to file that he says is easy and free. It's a new way for taxpayers to file taxes online, direct with the IRS. Stacey Lynn, CBS News. In Nevada, the Carson City Parks, Recreation and Open uh, Department is taking action to fight fires. It's a bit different. Yes, that is a flock of sheep. They're grazing on fields of grass. KTVN tells us it's part of the annual fuel reduction program. The sheep are meant to eat away the dry vegetation there to help prevent wildfires from sparking. This is CBS News. Sponsored by Progressive. See why over 28 million drivers trust Progressive to stay protected on the road. See for yourself at Progressive.com. Sorry, but we actually have a wait list for our Monstera. Shaw's greenhouse is really bringing in the green. We can't keep snake plants and stuff. She needs a construction manager to build on her roots and grow. We could add a whole section for ferns. Here we'd have dahlias, dahlias, and more dahlias. Indeed can help her hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit Indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. eBay Motors is here for the ride. Go ahead, feel your engine. Admire that perfectly installed exhaust. Your vehicle's moving along this freeway like it was made from fresh installs and a whole lot of love. With eBay Motors, you get over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. WNBA star Brittany Griner has a book coming out. But CBS's Monica Ricks tells us that's not the most exciting thing she's expecting. Brittany Griner and her wife Cheryl are expecting their first child together. The couple made the announcement on Instagram this weekend saying they'll meet their favorite human in July. It was nice to be back. It's been about a year since the WNBA star hit the basketball court again following her detainment in Russia. Just appreciating everything because, you know, tomorrow's not guaranteed. You don't know what it's going to look like. So I think that's kind of how, how it changed a little bit. Next month, she'll release a memoir on the experience called Coming Home. It's out May 7th. Monica Ricks, CBS News. The first drug shown to slow Alzheimer's is seeing a slower than expected rollout. Major hospital systems have taken months to figure out how to administer Legembi, which requires regular infusions and imaging scans. Some health insurers have rejected coverage. Doctors note some patients are hesitant. Michael Toscano, CBS News. Don't pay retail for your diamond engagement ring or gift. Come to cleanorigin.com, founded by a family of leaders in the diamond industry for more than a century. We're experts in ecologically friendly lab-grown diamonds because that's all we do. Come clean with Clean Origin, the only diamond jewelers who give you a 100-day, no-questions-asked return on your purchase. Head to cleanorigin.com or one of our retail stores and mention code RADIO10 to receive 10% off. That's cleanorigin.com, code RADIO10. 
Angie's List is now Angie, and we've heard a lot of theories about why. I thought it was an eco-move. Fewer words, less paper. No, it was so you could say it faster. No, it's to be more iconic. Must be a tech thing. But those aren't quite right. It's because now you can compare upfront prices, book a service instantly, and even get your project handled from start to finish. Sounds easy. It is. And it makes us so much more than just a list. Get started at Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I. Or download the app today. WPHT, WPHT, HD, WOGL, HD3, Philadelphia. From the Cherry Hill Volvo Studios, where relationships matter. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Live and local with Matt Rooney. On Talk Radio 1210, WPHT. Welcome back, old friends, new frenemies, and all who lie elsewhere in between on the spectrum that is life. I am Matt Bruni. This is the Matt Bruni Show. Our numero dos for our bilingual listeners and viewers of Trace. Tonight on 12th Head WPHT. Plowing through. The news of the week gone by to prepare you for the week ahead. And fitting more content, we're proud to say, into a three-hour program than the CDC says is safe. But we do it maskless. We do it for you. Unafraid, fearless, because we care about the truth getting out there in modern America. It's so hard to get through the white noise. That's why we're all the more committed to doing it here on 1210. No less true here on the Matt Rooney Show. 855-839-1210 is the number over on YouTube, youtube.com backslash at 1210WPHD. Participate in the comments. Give us a like. Show us some love. And speaking of love, I was listening to the news break while we were off air here, getting ready for hour number two. And I know Henry's having all the feels over Brittany Griner having her first child. I did not hear from that news report whether it was Brittany or her partner that were having the baby. One of the things that can get a little confusing about love in 2024, when it's the same sex couple, I don't know which one of them Uh, is carrying. Well, considering uh, the WNBA season is starting up soon, I think it'd have to be the partner. I guess that's logical. Yeah. But then again, I, I'm going to get in trouble for saying this. It's the WNBA, right? Like, she could probably play with a baby. At least until she's in her third trimester. I think she could get away with it. Yeah, maybe so. I mean, it's not, it's, it's not great basketball. It only lasts the summer. It's not great basketball. Hey, you got some, you got a lot of good college players coming in this year. So we'll see. Well, it could be starting to change, right? Yeah. Because women's basketball, and we talked about this on the program last week, more interest means more money means more recruiting which means possibly a better product up until now you haven't really had that i think this is the first year that the women's tournament actually had more viewers or at least the final than the men's yeah is that accurate that is accurate it should be noted too that uh the women's national championship was on abc and that the men's championship wasn't on cbs it was only on tbs Ah, Something so it was quick. buried deeper on a cable station that no one watches anymore. Correct. Got it. Okay. So, so there's I'm, a major not to take anything there. away because it was a fantastic uh, national championship between South Carolina and Iowa. Right. But that does, I think that does play a little bit of a factor. No, but it plays it plays into it, right? That that's a very see, Henry. This is why you earn your pay. You're in your keep around here. This is why we pay you the the big bucks. Yeah. Because of those those sorts of contributions, right? Uh, I'm looking at Brittany Griner's Instagram post where she announced that they're having, they're having a baby. Uh, she did major Matt Rooney pet peeve here. I have to be honest with you. Um, I'm very happy for them. Right. Um, love babies, love babies coming into the world. People having babies. It's all a good thing. Uh, this is the actual text of her announcement on Instagram and they've got, I guess it's one hand, one Britney's hand, and maybe I guess it's her partner's hand. I don't know if they're married or not. And they're over the sonogram photograph of the baby. Looks like it's pretty early. 
and it says, can't believe we're less than three months away from meeting our favorite human being. I hate when people refer to babies as human beings. And that may seem kind of counterintuitive to you, but it's this thing that you may have noticed. I see it a lot on social media. Someone will put in their profile, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a foreign policy analyst and I am a husband and, you know, father to two great humans. Well, what else would you be father to? What else would you be having, right? You're not giving birth to a gremlin, right? It's not a dog. It's not a cat. It's not an extraterrestrial. We know that it's a human. I know in this mixed up day and age in which we live, uh, they're trying to confuse biology, right? And make it more complicated than otherwise is. But as of yet, science has not figured out a way for you to give birth to something other than a human being. So we don't need to clarify that it's a human being that is going to be emerging from the birth canal, right? We can say, hey, it's a boy. Hey, it's a girl. Hey, it's a kid. Can't we make, wait to meet the baby? You don't need to specify that it's a human being. May not annoy you, kind of annoys me. There's plenty of things that annoy me that don't annoy other people. But this is definitely on the list. I'm thinking at some point we're going to create a full list and we're going to have a website dedicated just to it. I was actually even thinking maybe it's worthy of a segment where we give you a pet peeve a week because I've got plenty of them. Clearly. I do, Henry. <laughs> There's plenty of things that annoy you. Of Don't course. act like you're above it. There's plenty of weird stuff that twists you. Yeah. I mean, mainly it's, you know, driving related, I'd say. Driving related? Yeah. Well, that's funny being somebody from Pennsylvania because as a New Jersey and everything you guys do on the road drives me nuts. Everything you guys do on the road drives me nuts. Well, first of all, you don't drive. Oh. Everybody from Pennsylvania is just kind of like petering ba along out there on the I road drive. looking like they don't know where the heck they're going constantly. I, I drive. I, I don't know what you're I don't know where you're getting. That no, from. I haven't seen it. It's you Jersey people that just pitter patter, daughter along. No way, man. We're coming up on the shore you season. Drive like Biden walks. <laughs> <laughs> like I just went in my pants, like kind of doing the crab walk. Yeah. Is that the because be, Biden has a few different lane tortured going walks? Fifty-five, just like get out of the way. The biggest thing that you do over in Pennsylvania that drives me nuts is when you're going somewhere and you don't know where you're going, and it's clear you're trying to figure it out in the lane of traffic. Yeah, that does bother me. Pull over. Pull over to the side of the road and make a phone call, put it into your GPS, do something that's not going to result in a rear-end collision on the Atlantic City Expressway. I, I'm in agreement with you there. I think that's kind of all drivers. It's, it's very Pennsylvania-specific. I don't think. I think maybe if Pennsylvania is coming to New Jersey, it's like that. And it's the same thing if New Jersey people are coming over to Pennsylvania. The bad driving for my fellow Garden Staters is over-aggressive driving. Yeah. Rudeness, cutting you off, flipping you off, things like that. Pennsylvania, it's like, oh, you know, I've, I've never driven a car before. And here I go. I'm going to the beach. Let me stop in the middle of the highway and think about it for a second. Maybe this isn't you, Henry. I don't know. It's definitely I have, not I haven't. Me, I haven't observed you. But I, like I said, I think it's just what happens when you're driving in a different state and you go, uh, am I supposed to get off here? You know, you just don't know your, your way around completely. But going to the shore, it's pretty straightforward. Going to the shore, you should probably know. You've been going there your whole life. You should know what That's right. you're, you're getting on and off at. It's like two turns. Yeah. You get on the expressway. You maybe get off on the parkway if you're going south. To the Cape May County towns, yeah. Avalon, Ocean City, Seattle, wherever. Not that much to it. No. I actually think they should erect digital billboards on the Atlantic City Expressway of me giving Pennsylvanians pointers on how to get to the shore and how to drive safely. I would volunteer to do that as a service. I don't think Phil Murphy would take me up on it, but hey, you never know. 855-839-1210 is the number over on YouTube, youtube.com backslash at 1210WPHD. Let's take break numero uno of our second hour. But when we return, Jack Chitterelli, the man who just launched his gubernatorial campaign, he wants to succeed Phil Murphy, 
in New Jersey when Phil leaves office in January 2026. Big election next year in New Jersey. Is the third time the charm for Jack Cittarelli? Let's talk to him about it in just a moment. Back in a second. Hi, this is Dom Giordano. If you're dealing with inflammation or stiff joints, then Glyco Plus from Rescue Natural Supplements can be your ticket to a healthier spring. Glyco Plus features a unique blend of green-lipped muscle complex and UC2 collagen, specifically designed to support joint health. Collagen, a vital component of joint cartilage, plays a crucial role in maintaining strength and flexibility. And right now, Rescue Glyco Plus is buy one, get one free for anyone with our exclusive radio code. Just use the code RELIEF to double up your order for free. Again, that's R-E-L-I-E-F. Call them today at 800-26-LIVE, 800-262-5483. Speak to a knowledgeable rescue product consultant. You can also use the code online when you visit res-q.com, res-q.com. Get back into action with less pain and more comfort. Again, use the code RELIEF. Buy one, get one free on Rescue Glyco Plus. Don't miss the Education Show with Dom Giordano every Sunday morning at 5.30. Find out how you can help your child or grandchild succeed. Sponsored by New Hope Academy. Do you have shoeboxes full of photos? Today only, radio listeners get VIP access to the new Photo Legacy Box. Get your family's photos professionally scanned for as low as 7 cents, which is 76% less than what other brands charge. As the world's largest digitizer, you know you can trust Legacy Box to digitize your entire collection of 4x6 photos. Everything from the embarrassing haircut you had in the 90s to photos of your great-grandma's wedding. Visit LegacyBox.com value to get 200 photos scanned starting at just $19.95. Oh, and don't forget, Legacy Box also digitizes over 15 other types of analog media. So you can get your favorite memories on VHS or grandpa's film reels from the 40s digitized too. Take advantage of this exclusive offer on the new Photo Legacy Box today and preserve your past for as low as 7 cents. Go to LegacyBox.com slash value. That's LegacyBox.com slash value. At Odyssey, we help protect this planet we all share through our One Thing Sustainability Initiatives. We donate $1 million of media every year to local environmental nonprofit organizations. And this month, our Odyssey teams will be out in our local communities cleaning up, planting trees, and more. When we each do one thing, it becomes a hundred, a thousand, a million things for our planet. What's your one thing? For more, download the free Odyssey app or go to odyssey.com slash one thing. 93% of Pennsylvanians killed in a car crash while unbelted could have survived if they just buckled up. One simple click, a second of your time. It's the difference between making it home to your loved ones or not making it home at all. Whether you're a driver or a passenger, make the life-changing choice to wear a seatbelt every drive, every time. It's not just the law, it's common sense. Buckle up, PA. Learn more at pennpagovernor slash safety. Paid for with Pennsylvania taxpayer dollars. One in five rely on the Catholic Charities Appeal for help. The fact is, nearly one million times per year, our programs provide assistance to people in need. We can't do this vital work without you. Your gift matters. Go to catholiccharitiesappeal.org to donate today. Are you a victim of the Timeshare trap and think there's no way out? I'm Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group, the original timeshare cancellation expert. And I'm here to tell you that there is a way out. All you need to do is give my office a call. I will send you a timeshare exit information kit absolutely free, explaining how the timeshare industry works and your options for cancellation. Call Wesley now for your free info kit, 800-790-1400, 800-790-1400. Free speech lives here with Rich Zioli, afternoons 3 to 7, talk radio 1210, WPHT. I'm getting some grief, Henry, for my WNBA comment. Oh, yeah? I got a little bit of feedback there. Do you hear that? 
Yeah, I'm hearing it too. Man, that's too much me even for me. <laughs> that's not easy. I know, right, Jack? <laughs> well, we'll get that sorted out. This is the beauty of live radio. I love it. Yeah. Henry, what do you think? <laughs> Are people at home hearing double? All right. Well, we'll 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 risk it, right? Because life is a risk. I'll tell you what else is a risk. Running for governor, right? New Jersey is one of the most difficult places to be on the ballot, right? New Jersey voters are notoriously fickle. And it's also a state where you have to run in some of the most expensive media markets in the country. It's a challenge. But Jack Cittarelli is about ready to take a bite at the apple for the third time. And he believes, I don't want to put words in his mouth, that the third time is the charm. He is a small businessman. He is a former New, New Jersey, Jersey assemblyman. And as of Tuesday, he is officially in the race for governor in 2025. And he joins us tonight on the Matt Rooney Show. Jack Cittarelli, welcome back to the program and to 1210 WPHD. Thanks for joining us. Matt, thanks for having me. And uh, thank you for being part of the announcement on Tuesday night as part of the uh, press corps that covers New Jersey politics. It was great to see you there. Well, I appreciate you having us. You had a full room. There had to be, I don't know, a thousand people in that ballroom out there in Freehold, an historic hotel where the history nerd and me love this. It was a stop off for Abraham Lincoln in That's 1861 right. when he was headed down to Washington, D.C. for his inaugural, correct? That is correct. And he's my political hero and uh, the political patron saint of all Republicans. Our greatest president was the first Republican president, Abraham Lincoln. A hard act to follow, right? I did. I do have to say this. Um, great launch. It went off very well. I thought everybody there was high on enthusiasm for your candidacy, as you would expect of your supporters. Um, a lot of amateurs, though, because they they walked into the ballroom. I think they were overwhelmed by how many people were there, and they didn't continue on to the other side of the ballroom, where it was about 16 degrees cooler, and there was a lot more room to move around. So being the pro that I am, I kind of muscled in there. I maybe elbowed a few old ladies, not intentionally, but just incidentally. And I got a really good view of the stage and your remarks and was able to watch everything. But I was joking with Eric Arpert, your campaign manager. I said, next year, I'm willing to stand there with some signs, letting people know that if you're going to go to these events, you have to move on to the other side of the room. Don't congregate near the entrance. <laughs> There was great energy in the room, uh, Matt, and uh, that's one thing I've always prided myself on is bringing a lot of positive energy to the campaign. It's a, it's a real asset. So we need not only a candidate who can win, one who brings a lot of positive energy to the campaign, and one who's going to benefit all Republican candidates down ballot. Um, that's my responsibility. You ask for the privilege of being the nominee. You've got an obligation to all Republicans down ballot. I think we came through pretty well for them in 2021. I plan to do so again in 25. So there, therein lies the question, right, that I got from the most listeners and viewers heading into tonight's discussion. I advertised that you were going to be on the program. We were excited to have you to talk about your launch. And people had tons of questions. But the number one inquiry was, all right, so Jack ran in 2017, didn't get the nomination, secured it in 2021, came up short. Now he's running a third time. Why should we give Jack Cittarelli another chance. What about Jack 2025 is going to get Republicans across the, the finish line in this state when he was unable to do so in 2021? What's your, what's your answer to any skeptics? Matt, when you take a look at history, I'm in pretty good company. Tom Kane Sr. lost before he won. Christy Todd Whitman lost before she won. Chris, uh, Chris Christie lost two races before he won. Ronald Reagan lost in 68 and 76 before he won. And our political patron saint, as I said, Abraham Lincoln lost six times before he won. Listen, we've been in it to win it each time. What's very different this time around compared to 2021 is the landscape. I won't have to deal with a pandemic. Awfully hard to campaign when there's a shelter in place order uh, executed by, uh, by executive order by, by the uh, sitting governor, Phil Murphy. And uh, I also think there's a whole lot less indifference this time around 
I was running 12 months after Donald Trump had lost the state by 16 points. And a whole lot of people thought that no Republican gubernatorial candidate had a chance. Um, there's not that kind of indifference this time around. And I do believe the issues continue to be on our side. Uh, 30 months in a row, Republicans have out-registered Democrats in the state in terms of new registrations. There's 100,000 fewer Democrats in the state today than there were in 2021. Donald Trump's ahead in all the swing states, and he's in single digits here in New Jersey. And so all those things add up, I think, to the right kind of momentum to deliver a win for the candidate who's got the best name ID all throughout the state. And you certainly do have some name recognition from your prior two runs. People know who Jack Cittarelli is. And now in 2025, I guess you'll have the added benefit should you get the Republican nomination of not running against an incumbent. Phil Murphy is term limited, thank God, uh, because I don't think any of us can do this for another four years. Uh, he's hobbled, arguably, as a governor because of the unsuccessful bid of his wife for United States Senate. Um, I don't think I've had a chance to talk to you about this, by the way. I mean, you you ran on 2021 attacking Phil Murphy for some of his excesses of power as governor. Did you ever envision that he would have the brass ones to try to install his wife as Bob Menendez's as successor? Uh, Matt, nothing surprises me with the Murphys, quite frankly. I mean, he had the audacity to say he wanted to make New Jersey the California, the East Coast. And by the way, earthquakes in New Jersey, I didn't think he was serious, but obviously he was serious about making New Jersey the California, the East Coast. So right. listen, the, these people, I, I want to believe that Republicans are in government for the right reasons to improve the quality of life for people. People like Phil Murphy, Tammy Murphy, Bob Menendez, they're in it for prestige, power, and, uh, and all the wrong reasons. And it was an egregious conflict of interest for her not to suspend her duties as first lady while being a U.S. Senate candidate. She's got an office. She has a budget. She has a staff. And she was using all three to advance her candidacy. Uh, but her own party rejected her. And now she's uh, shut it down. And I think that maybe it'll benefit Republicans in 2025, right? Even though that Phil Murphy's not on the ballot, sometimes we find that at the end of a two-term administration of one part or the other, there's an appetite to move on. And Phil Murphy's certainly doing a lot to convince New Jerseyans that maybe it's time for change. When you ran in 2021, you had a primary, but I don't think a serious challenger emerged this time around could be different we'll see what happens so far there's one other candidate officially in the republican race john bramnick and i say in the republican race with maybe an asterisk because john isn't necessarily the most reliable republican that new jerseyans have you may have more commentary on that uh you did during your launch speech you made a reference to hot dogs and hamburgers and how you wouldn't sell out over a barbecue like some other Republicans could. Could you maybe let us in on what you were referring to? Well, Matt, while I was running for governor eight days a week and trying to produce re Republican victories down ballot, and by the way, we did have the most successful night in 30 years, picking up seven seats in the state legislature and beating the longest sitting state Senate president in the country. Um, you know, when, when one of your Republican colleagues is entertaining Phil Murphy in his backyard over hot dogs and hamburgers, and then posting it on the internet, you know, that, that kind of stings a little bit. I mean, what side are you on? I mean, I'm all for compromise, if need be. I'm all for having friendly relationships with Democrats. But in the thick of the race, to be entertaining the Democratic nominee in your backyard, uh, obviously it got under the center's skin a little bit because he went online and made a couple of comments. But listen, the, the one thing that the Bill Spadia and John Bramnick have in common is that neither one of them were helpful to me in 2021. And no matter how bad of a candidate you thought I was, I was our nominee. And are you telling me I wasn't better than Phil Murphy? <laughs> yeah, and this is nothing against you, Jack. But, I mean, you know, imagine what it would take to say that somebody wasn't a better option for Phil Murphy on the right side of the aisle, right? But it is true that, that, that it was notable that John Bramnick sat on his hands at best uh, and didn't support you in 2021. 
So, uh, you know, it's interesting to see him seek the Republican nomination this time around on the basis of being the most electable Republican when you didn't try to help elect the last one. You mentioned Bill Spady a minute ago. Bill Spady is the morning host on another radio station, NJ1015. He may be getting in the race. All the indicators are there. Uh, You made a reference during your opening remarks at your launch on Tuesday in Freehold to extreme rhetoric. I think most people there thought you were talking about Bill. What extreme rhetoric specifically are you referring to? Well, you you know, I don't listen to the radio show because he's constantly insulting other Republicans around the state going as far as to call people criminal, criminal. So, but um, there have been some pretty outlandish remarks over the years over his programming. And I think people, it seems, are, are going to hear a lot of the, that being repeated so we can demonstrate who Bill really is. But listen, Matt, I, I really believe this. We need somebody who's going to unify the party as best he can. Um, you don't unify the party by poking your finger in the eye of the moderate wing of our party and calling them rhinos, which Bill Spady has done. Uh, nor do you unify the party by poking your finger in the eye of the people that support Donald Trump and calling them crazies. Um, that's what John Brandick has done. And, and by the way, this crusade on civility. I don't know anything civil about calling fellow Republicans who've decided to vote for Donald Trump crazies. People are entitled to vote who they want to vote for. It's still a free country. And um, so we're outnumbered by a million. We've got to unify our party. We've got to have somebody that can attract unaffiliated independent voters and someone that can convince Democrats that our ideas are the right ones. I've been on the November ballot eight times and won seven of those races every single time in races where Democrats outnumber Republicans sometimes by a lot. It's not because I've ever compromised on my conservative principles. It's always been because I go out and talk about the issues that matter to people, whether it's property taxes, doing business, particularly on Main Street, keeping our communities safe by supporting law enforcement and offering a quality education where we don't have to worry about sending our kids to school worrying what the curriculum is that day. Yeah, I I never have really thought it was that complicated, Jack. Uh, You know, clearly, I I look at it as an attorney, for example, right? So I'm I'm a lawyer. People come into my office and they decide whether or not to hire me. They don't want someone that's going to scream and rant and rave like a maniac and throw things at the wall hoping something sticks. But I've yet to have somebody ever engage my legal services strictly on the basis of how nice I am and how reasonable I'm going to be to the other side, right? They want they want an advocate, um, and that's the part of the experiment that it just seems like so many Republicans in New Jersey don't seem to understand. You could be tough and you can be an advocate without coming across as crazy. So we'll see whether or not someone, maybe it'll be you, will be able to thread that needle in 2025. But your your launch speech wasn't just about your potential opponents. There was also plenty of of substance in there. One thing that I I think you and I joked about briefly when I saw you after your speech was that you proposed legislative term limits. There were a few legislators in the office who were in the audience who were supporting you. And I think they're still supporting you after your speech, who squirmed a little bit when you said that you were going to limit legislators, at least this would be your proposal, to eight years in Trenton. Eight years in any one office. So you could serve eight years in the assembly, then move on to the Senate. So you could possibly serve 16 years in Trenton. I think it's an idea, Matt, whose time has come. We have a term limit on our governor. In Virginia, by the way, the term limit is one. You can come back and run later on, but you can't serve two terms in a row. We need new ideas. I think one of the reasons why we have such persistent problems in New Jersey, like property taxes, like being the worst state in the country to do business, the worst state to retire in, and too many kids not on grade level for reading, writing, math and failing districts like we see in Newark is because we don't have new ideas. And um, and by the way, some of the ideas that are coming out of Trenton are just uh, really get the hair on the back of your neck to stand up uh, because I think just people have been there too long. So that's not to say we don't have some outstanding public servants in Trenton. We do. Uh, but at the same time, turnover is good. And I, I think 16 years is is more than adequate time. And then we get some new blood in there. So. Um, it, it's an idea whose time has come. I don't think anyone's going to argue with that. Whether or not it can happen is a different story. Do you also think that maybe there's something to be said that our legislature spends too much time meeting? I think Texas, their legislature gets together once every two years. Uh, I, I don't know if it needs to be that long, but I, you, I think, insinuated a minute ago, there is are a ton of really bad bills coming out of Trenton 
on a regular basis. Uh, there's an old saying about idle hands being the devil's playground, right? And, and maybe there's something to that. Should maybe Trenton just meet less frequently? I think it's another idea we should certainly explore. Look what other states do do with their state legislatures. But more than anything, Matt, I think what we need is change. Uh, there's been a 25 year, year rule of Democrats. And uh, as the nominee, and I hope to be the nominee, if I have the privilege of being the nominee, I've got an obligation to try to produce a Republican majority. And, you know, people laughed at me last time around, including two of my opponents. Uh, but we did beat the longest sitting state Senate president in the country and did pick up seven seats. And there were a couple other races that were really, really close. So, listen, I'm going to believe um, I'm going to go around the state and I'm going to proposition the people of New Jersey. If you want change, you got to make a change. If you like the way things are, and I find few people that do, um, if you like the way things are, I guess you'll stick with the Democrats. But just give us a chance. You're going to like the way we govern. I think this state more than ever needs a common sense conservative approach to solving our kitchen table issues. And I talked about some of those ideas and specificity uh, the other night. Uh, but it all starts with an attorney general, Matt, that's going to support police and parents. The current one does not. And we've had it after eight years. We need an attorney general that's going to support our men and women in blue and support parents. You don't have to beg me, Jack. I will be with Henry as my witness, your attorney general, if you ask me. <laughs> and I know you'll support yeah. police and parents. Well, right. Again, you know, that's one of the common themes here. The bar is unfortunately so low, thanks to the folks at the other side of the aisle, puts up for these very important positions. It's it's not even just a matter of not supporting them anymore, right? Matt Placken has declared war, along with Governor Murphy, on parents and their prerogative to raise their children in this state. You talked a lot about education reform in 2021. It seems to be, based upon your launch speech, a theme again I think there's a corollary here because in the 2024 polling, Jack, we see potentially record numbers of non-white voters, black, Hispanic voters, considering voting for Donald Trump and Republicans this time around. We know traditionally those are constituencies that look more favorably on school choice proposals. So my question for you, in addition to everything else you're proposing, could 2025 be the year where Republicans can successfully run on school choice in New Jersey, and if they are able to, what what might it look like? Well, first, I, I know there's some skepticism about these kind of issues and, and parental rights, and we got to be more specific as to what that means because we didn't fare too well last November. But I would offer is that it's very challenging for Republicans in this state when we don't have one guy at the top of the ballot who's out there eight days a week with that very positive energy, delivering a very concise message as to what our agenda is and is spending $30 million while he's doing it. That creates a tie that lifts all boats, and I can hold my head high knowing I had coattails, and we'll do that again. So um, I don't think we were wrong on the issues last November, Matt. That's the reason why a very prominent state Democratic state senator was doing TV commercials with police departments. It's the reason why the Senate president and the Assembly Speaker were sending letters to the State Board of Education and the BPU commissioner about Phil Murphy's policies. There was a great deal of concern. We were right on the issues. We're just really bad at turnout. And so I don't see that being the case next time around. You know, usually gubernatorial turnout in the state is 35 to 40 percent. I think we got it up to 44. All along, I knew we needed to be somewhere around 45 to 48 to deliver a win. I think it's going to even be even better in 2025 than it was in 2021. Now, I, kn I know that during your launch speech, you also talked about lowering taxes, which, once again, you don't need to argue with almost anyone in New Jersey that our taxes are too high. But I almost sense when this issue comes up every two or every four years when we have our state election cycles, there is a certain sense of skepticism among the people of New Jersey that taxes could ever change in this state. The Democrats continue to raise them, and every now and then we get a Republican governor or we elect a Republican, but maybe we stop speeding towards the cliff, the fiscal cliff, as fast as we were previously, but things continue to get worse all the same. If you're elected governor in 2025, what can you do to actually start to move the needle back in the other direction concerning our tax burden? I understand the skepticism, Matt. I would go a step further and say for granted many New Jerseyans, it's cynicism and, and justifiably so. Listen, this budget is up $20 billion, $20 billion in less than seven years' time. 
And if all that money had been dedicated to property tax relief, permanent tax relief, that's easy to implement, I would tip my cap to Murphy. And as I said in the debates last time, I would have endorsed him. But instead, it's $58 million for a French museum in Jersey City. It's one and a half billion dollars on pork projects. Everything has to be on the table. And from someone who doesn't want to be congressman, doesn't want to be senator, doesn't want to be president, doesn't want to be write a book, um, you know, I don't have to have a second term. This isn't a job that I need. It's a job that I want. But I'm going to do what we need to do to get this state on the right track. And by the way, Matt, if the Democratic governor of Pennsylvania can cut the business tax in half from 10 to 5 percent to 10 to 5 percent, why can't we? Why can't we? I mean, I just came back from a conference in Tennessee. There's no income tax there. Everything is driven off the sales tax. We need to take a look at what other states do. I keep hearing about we have the, the best public education system in the in the country, second only to Massachusetts. But yet Massachusetts system is 20 percent less expensive than ours. That's billions of dollars that we're talking about. We need a new school funding formula. How many billions are we going to send to places like Newark that are failing at students uh, with a cost per pupil that's off the charts? There is more than enough revenue to put in policies that improve things like education, but also make us more attractive from a tax standpoint for businesses and individuals. I believe it. So there's plenty to talk about in New Jersey. Unfortunately, there's more problems than we have time. That's one of the reasons why 2025 and our election next year after the presidential is behind us is so critical, not just for our, our state, I think, but also nationally to see whether or not Republicans can find their footing in, quote unquote, blue states. But before I let you go, Jack, I have to ask you about the events overseas. New Jersey has one of the largest Jewish populations in the country, Israel under direct attack from Iran for the first time in modern history. Phil Murphy, by the way, says he's monitoring that. I, I'm not sure exactly what it means for the governor of New Jersey to monitor it. We know Phil's uh, response to most crises is either to put on a mask or to brine the roads, even when it's 60 plus degrees. So, you know, whatever. But I imagine you have some thoughts over what we're all watching unfold on television. Israel is a peaceful democracy, Matt, until it is attacked. And then it has every right to defend itself and ensure that its citizens are safe. And uh, they're a partner of ours and uh, we're attached to the hip and we should do everything we can to ensure that the citizens of that democracy are safe. So, um, you know, I went to uh, Israel as a gubernatorial candidate. I went to Storo, which is a city that is right on the, the border with Gaza. And only the week before, a couple had lost their five-year-old because of a missile that had hit their condominium building. I sat with those parents, saw firsthand what Israelis are up against every single day. And I got to say, Matt, I, I came home with a bit of envy. There's a degree of nationalism in Israel you just don't see here in the United States, sadly. Maybe it's because everybody in Israel has to serve in the military. Maybe it's because it's a con country that's constantly under threat from, from terrorists and hostile rogue nations like Iran. Uh, but um, we're going to be there for Israel and do whatever we need to do to protect its sovereignty. And I issued a statement to that effect over the weekend. It's a very fair point, right? I mean, we all remember, or at least many of us remember, it was like, Henry, you weren't alive yet. We've talked about that during 9-11, a fact which both blows my mind and depresses me because you're so young. But we remember what it was like, Jack, after 9-11, when this country very briefly came together. And obviously, we never want to experience that again. But we'd like to have that spirit once again in this country. We really do. And it all comes down to leadership and its ability to uh, to galvanize us around issues. It doesn't always have to be wartime like issues. Uh, but I'll tell you one issue that should galvanize the American people. And I think it's the reason why Trump is ahead in the swing states. Um, people believe what they see, not always what they hear, not always what they read, but what they see and what they see every single day is what's going on on our border. They see the lawlessness in our communities. They see the price of groceries. They see a president that's not up to the job any longer and a vice president that's unqualified for the job. And that's why Donald Trump is going to win this year. And I believe will be our next president. From your mouth to God's ear, because God knows we can't take any more of this. We can do better than this. And hopefully the people of New Jersey, my home state, will do better next year in 2025. Jack Cittarelli, he, he could be that guy. Stay tuned. You can check him out over on X, by the way, Jack4NJ. 
is his handle and your website, Jack. Can you remind us? Uh, www.jack4nj.com. And that's the number four, jack4nj.com. And I appreciate uh, you uh, giving me the opportunity to share that with your audience, Matt. Always a pleasure, Mr. Chitterelli. We'll have you back soon to talk about the campaign. Plenty more to talk about. Okay, man. Looking forward to it. Be well. Thank you. That's Jack Chitterelli, everyone, former New Jersey Assemblyman candidate for governor for the Republican nomination in 2025. That's right. For those of you that don't have these wacky, odd year elections, that's how we roll in New Jersey. It's just us in Virginia which gives us an opportunity to have a little bit of extra attention on our statewide issues. At least that was the intention, right? But one upside is that, at least in theory, it allows for an election where the opposition has a chance when maybe they wouldn't otherwise with all of the presidential year turnout. So we'll see what happens next year. Plenty more to talk about in the interim with a presidential election right around the corner. And you know, that's what we're going to continue to talk about here on the Matt Rooney Show. 855-839-1210 over on YouTube, youtube.com backslash at 1210WPHT. Quick break. Back with more this hour in just a second. So I just want to make sure my take on Woodrow Wilson is strong and clear and nobody has any questions. I hate the man's guts. What about Edith Wilson? What do you think of her? I hate her too. Okay. When I can't sleep, I sit there and remind myself of all the reasons why I hate Woodrow Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> to lull myself. Instead of counting sheep, you count reasons to hate Woodrow <laughs> Wilson. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a very effective strategy, let me tell you. Which is the only week afternoons, 3 to 7. Talk Radio 1210, WPHT, and on the free Odyssey app. Pain in your knees, shoulders, hips, or back that won't go away? Check out QC Kinetics. No surgery, drugs, or downtime. QC Kinetics, 215-999-3000. Join us at Odyssey as we all do our one thing, together millions of things, for our planet. Earth Day is April 22nd. Clean out harsh cleaning products and detergents and look for cleaning products with green certification. What's your one thing? Hey, it's Rich Zioli. Let me tell you about my buddy, Dr. Mike Venaria. Great guy. Whether you're looking for pediatric, general, cosmetic, or implant dentistry, look no further. Dr. Venaria and his award-winning team have your whole family covered, just like mine. Dr. Venaria's office exceeds CDC guidelines and has always maintained the strictest infection control with centralized UV sterilization of airflow to ensure your safety. Locations right over the bridge in Cinnamonson and Woodbury, 856-786-2020, or Venaria Dental. If you want jazz music, go to New Orleans. Bagels has to be New York. Skiing, Colorado, every time. And for psychics, think California Psychics. When you want the best, some places are better than others. That's why at CaliforniaPsychics.com, home of free spirits, big dreams, and open minds, we know better than anyone what makes a good psychic. In fact, 98% of the psychics who apply to work with us don't make the grade. We connect you with the very best, so we can guarantee if your reading isn't life-changing, it's free. Download the app or connect with us at CaliforniaPsychics.com. Right now, new customers receive 20 minutes for just $20. So whatever direction you want to take your life, you know where to start. Experience the joy of certainty. California Psychics. When you need to know, depend on KYW News Radio 1039 FM. The group of seven nations is considering additional sanctions on Iran after its drone and missile attack on Israel. Former President Donald Trump's hush money trial starts Monday, and it doesn't appear that a long awaited connection between SEPTA and Antrak at 30th Street is happening anytime soon. Get the latest anytime on KYW News Radio. Now on Crystal Clear 103.9 FM. You've never needed us more. Are you ready to take your business to the next level? My name is Michael Bertoni, founder and CEO of SAS Talent and Philly 100 board member. I wanted to invite you to join the Philadelphia 100 Forum CEO community. Your key to meaningful content, peer-to-peer learning, and business opportunities. Every year, the Philadelphia 100 recognizes the region's fastest growing companies. Just go to philly100.org to learn more about becoming a member of the forum. That's philly100.org. Calling on Blackwood to follow 1210 WPHT on the free Odyssey app. Download it now.
All right, Henry, so new rule on the show. I know how woke you are and how concerned you are with political correctness and using the proper terms and not offending anyone. Of course. Sounds like you, right? As one is, yeah. As one is. Uh, you are not to use Latinx anymore. No. Yes. When producer Dan used to be here, Dan Valdez, he was our Latinx expert um, slash coordinator slash correspondent. That's right. Um, were he here today, he would, we would no longer be calling him that because it's been retired. Oh, has it? Yes. This is according to townhall.com. Um, they were opining on an Axios story, <laughs> uh, that can, well, I'm just going to read this to you from Axios because sometimes uh, me relaying it doesn't do the craziness justice. You need to just take it unfiltered directly into your veins. Uh, Latin E, I think that's how it's pronounced. It's Latin with an E on the end instead of an X. A gender neutral way to describe or refer to people with Latino origins is surging in popularity on university campuses, in museums, and among researchers and media. Let's, let's take a time out there before I even continue. Notice that it says that it's surging in popularity on university campuses, in museums, and among researchers and media. Nowhere in there does it say what, Henry? That it's surging in popularity among Latinos. actual Hispanic yeah. people. Right, yeah, that like live in the real world, not in museums. <laughs> what does it mean to surge in popularity in a museum? The entire point of a museum is nothing in the museum is alive. Right? It's yeah. all static works of art, history, whatever, exhibits. placards. It's, it's surging in popularity among wax statues. Uh, it's a little confusing. Uh, the big picture, back to the Axios story, catch-all terms like Hispanic or Latino have come under scrutiny for blurring important nuances and presenting a large part of the U.S. population as a monolith. Latin -y is part of a movement centered on wanting to build and foster an inclusive community, says Carlos Vavala, vice president at a consulting firm Whiteboard Advisors, which has used the term in reports from its work with tech and education groups. 41% of U.S. Latinos in the latest Axios Ipsos Latino poll in partnership with Noticias Telemundo says they are comfortable with Latin A. So never before, let, control for a minute how stupid this is. Objectively stupid and insulting. Not just to all of our collective intelligence, but to Hispanic people. Right. But this is surging in popularity in museums and on campuses. And the person commenting on it isn't some community leader in an Hispanic community or municipality or neighborhood somewhere across this great fruited plain of ours. Right. It's a vice president at a consulting firm. They're admitting without acknowledging it that all of this crap is completely fabricated. None of it is real. None of it is authentic, right? These are terms that are being created by a fringe elite that exists only in museums <laughs> or in universities or in consulting companies that impose their worldview and their wacky ideas on everyone else. Is it any wonder why polling is starting to show that black Americans, Hispanic Americans, non-white Americans generally are starting to take a second look at the GOP, right? It's not that all of these groups are all of a sudden deciding to hang portraits of Ronald Reagan and Abraham Lincoln in their living rooms with little devotional candles like the old Italian women used to do with Frank Sinatra and the Pope, right? It, it's not that, right? But they're recognizing that they are being patronized to, they are being disrespected, they are being talked down to by the Democrat Party with nothing to show for it. Sadly, I think many human beings are willing to put up with disrespect if they think that there's something in it for them and their families and their communities, right? But more now than ever before, in this age of incessant, constant warfare and conflict overseas, hyperinflation, the craziness going on in our schools, what does a second or third generation son or daughter of immigrants, right? think that the Democrat Party genuinely has to offer them, other than 
cool new names to describe themselves that are gender neutral that they created in a library or a museum or a laboratory or a classroom with no basis in actual history, with no organic roots in the actual community. So I say, hey, Vice President Vavala, keep up what you're doing. Good work. Thanks for the assist. Because I think the more of this that's out there, the more likely it is that our fellow Americans are going to wake up and realize the Democrat Party is nothing but a useless husk, an empty husk of condescending labels with no substance behind them and nothing to offer the American people. Rich, poor, most of us somewhere in between. They've got nothing to offer us whatsoever. And those polls, and I'm, I'm going to have one for you next hour. I mentioned earlier that I had some data for you from the New York Times. We're going to talk about that survey if we have time to get to it. There's also a story over in the Epoch Times concerning this general drift of Hispanic and Black Americans away from Democrats. And it doesn't, it doesn't have to be massive to make a difference in elections. I remember election night 2016 watching the Pennsylvania results. And I knew, because I'm a nerd for this stuff and I pay attention, in 2008, 2012, Barack Obama got 99%, 98%, 99% in all of these wards in Philadelphia, right? And then in 2016, Hillary Clinton got 89%, 92%, 86%, 82%. Still feels overwhelming, right? Mathematically, she got a strong majority. but. You only need a small number in each of those wards in those communities to say, you know what, I'm not, I'm not down for this. I'm not going to be treated this way. And then wake up and either vote for the Republican or maybe, you know, a non-vote is a valid vote sometimes. If you decide that neither the major candidates are serving your interests, just abstain, right? That's mm-hmm. all it really takes to flip a state like Pennsylvania and throw Joe Biden out of office. I feel like I always hear otherwise, like you don't vote. You know, what are you doing? Oh, the, the vote. Were, were you too young for vote or die? Uh, that sounds familiar. Yeah. When I was a teen, it, they, they got these rappers together and they had this promotion called vote or die. The implication being that if you don't vote, you're going to die. Um, I'm, I'm still not sure how that works um, because I know plenty of people that don't vote and seem quite healthy and happy and well adjusted. But I don't buy into that. Henry, I think voting is important. I think you should. But this whole idea that regardless of whether you're informed, you should vote. I think that that's objectively stupid, right? For all the obvious reasons, I would think. Or let's say maybe you generally have two horrible options, you know, right? Maybe you're, you have a congressional district. There's only two people running and one is terrible and the other is terrible. Maybe there, it's valid to have a protest vote by not voting or to go in the booth and write in Henry Machette. Yeah. Right. I mean, screw that's... the lesser of two evils. I don't want either. Yes. Yes. I think elections are generally binary. So you have to look at what the consequences are of not voting. But the idea that you always have to vote and select the options that are given to you, I think that that's equally crazy. 855-839-1210 is the number over on YouTube, youtube.com backslash at 1210WPHT. I am Matt Rooney. This is the Matt Rooney Show. Two hours down. One left to go. So buckle up, pop some popcorn, refill that coffee mug. We'll be back with our final hour, still chock full of content in a second. When you need to know, depend on KYW News Radio 1039 FM. The group of seven nations is considering additional sanctions on Iran after its drone and missile attack on Israel. Former President Donald Trump's hush money trial starts Monday, and it doesn't appear that a long awaited connection between SEPTA and Amtrak at 30th Street is happening anytime soon. Get the latest anytime on KYW News Radio. Now on Crystal Clear 103.9 FM. You've never needed us more. In Security Council, Iran's weekend attack on Israel was an exercise in its, quote, inherent right to self-defense. CBS News correspondent Imtiaz Tayyab is in Tel Aviv as Israel decides its next move. The Iranian assault was in retaliation for Israel's strike on Tehran's embassy in Damascus, which killed two Iranian generals. Now, following its strikes, Iran has warned Israel 
and the U.S. of a, quote, much larger response if there was any retaliation for its attack as Israel continues to weigh its response. President Biden and the Democratic and Republican leaders of the House and Senate spent part of their Sunday on the phone trying to deal with a long-stalled foreign aid package that's especially important to Israel and Ukraine. Arizona's Democratic Senator Mark Kelly. This is all connected. Uh, Iran, Ukraine, China. Um, the stock of Ukrainian ammunition is dwindling. They're going to run out of ammunition. Russia's capacity, we, we look at this all the time, is going up with the help of China. Russia can win this. If we support Ukraine, Ukraine can win. Kelly was on CBS's Face the Nation. As this plays out, director of surveys for CBS News, Anthony Salvanto, says a small majority of Americans still believe helping Ukraine is important. Those who say that Russia is an enemy of the United States are more likely to back aid to Ukraine. And those, in turn, show some partisan differences where you get almost half of Democrats calling Russia an enemy, but 29 percent of Republicans do so. The start of the hush money criminal trial of former President Donald Trump this week will begin with jury selection. And CBS News correspondent Chanel Call tells us that could be tricky. Some legal experts say prosecutors and Trump's defense team will be closely looking for stealth jurors, people who lie to get on the jury. Jury selection is expected to take weeks. At the Masters, it might as well be St. Patrick's Day because Scotty Scheffler is wearing the green again for the second time in three years. Scheffler closed with a 68 for a four-shot victory, and it didn't sound like he would be stopping by the 19th hole as he spoke during the jacket ceremony on CBS. I can't put into words what it means to win this tournament again. I, I really can't put it into words what it's going to be like to be a father for the first time. So i uh, looking forward to getting home and um, celebrating with Meredith, and uh, it's been a long week here without her. Um, but... I'm just looking forward to getting home. Tiger Woods finished with a 16 over 304. This is CBS News. Think O'Reilly Auto Parts for all your car care needs. Get the parts and service you need fast from the professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Sorry, but we actually have a wait list for our Monstera. Shaw's greenhouse is really bringing in the green. We can't keep snake plants in stock. She needs a construction manager to build on her roots and grow. We could add a whole section for ferns. Here we'd have dahlias, dahlias, and more dahlias. Indeed can help her hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit Indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply eBay Motors is here for the ride. Go ahead, feel your engine. Admire that perfectly installed exhaust. Your vehicle's moving along this freeway like it was made from fresh installs and a whole lot of love. With eBay Motors, you get over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. This is Larry Steinhaus with Investor Schooling. Are you ready for retirement? Have you prepared everything you need? Well, at Investor Schooling, we will teach you ways to better prepare for your retirement using real estate and the stock market. But you need to learn how to do it right. And that's what we teach. At Investor Schooling, we sell nothing but education. Come to Investor Schooling and learn how to have a better retirement. Go to InvestorSchooling.com and RSVP right now for this Thursday's class at 7 o'clock. Go to InvestorSchooling.com. That's InvestorSchooling.com. This is Larry Steinitz with Investor Schooling. Are you tired of hearing about the recession that's coming? Are you prepared for it? Well, listen, at InvestorSchooling.com, we're going to teach you ways to prepare for the recession that you didn't even know existed. We're going to teach you strategies on how to use real estate. We're going to teach you strategies how to use the stock market properly. That's right. You can even make money in the stock market when the stock market goes down. Hey, go to InvestorSchooling.com and register for a free class this Thursday night, and you will learn all of these techniques. Go to InvestorSchooling.com right now, RSVP for this Thursday. We'll see you there. Have you been thinking about doing a Roth conversion, but the upfront taxes are holding you back? Welcome to RothRight. We can show you how to significantly reduce taxes on a conversion, potentially saving hundreds of thousands, even millions in taxes over your lifetime. A Roth conversion will give you tax-free income, eliminate required minimum distributions, and leave a tax-free estate to your heirs. Sign up for a free educational seminar now. Call 855-415-ROTH. That's 855-415-ROTH. RothRight is not a financial advisory firm. Consult with a tax professional before making any financial decisions. WPHT, WPHT, HD, WOCL, 
HD3 Philadelphia from the Cherry Hill Volvo Studios, where relationships matter. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Live and local with Matt Rooney on Talk Radio 1210 WPHD. Welcome back, boys and girls. Hour number three of the Matt Rooney Show this evening on 1210 WPHT. An honor, a pleasure, a privilege, all the things, as the Gen Zers would say, to be with you this evening and every Sunday evening from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard on Philadelphia's number one conservative talk radio station. Joined as ever by the one, the only, an inspiration to his producing generation, Henry Machette. Hello, Henry. Hi, Matt. You're, you're too kind with the, that intro. I thought it was decent. I mean, I'll take it. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Just, I, w- I wouldn't give myself that much credit. I'm giving you partial credit. You at least attempted the math problem. You showed your work. I did, yeah. That, yes. That is like a lot of my math tests in high school. I, <laughs> I attempted to solve it. The E for effort, my man. The E for effort. 855-839-1210 is the number here on the program. You can join us also over on YouTube, youtube.com backslash at 1210WPHT. And I am also broadcasting tonight's program over on the X platform. My account name handle i guess we're still calling it a handle that didn't change when it was no longer twitter matt rooney nj i'm never calling it x by the way am i ever going to stop saying tweet no i don't think so when you start saying post no occasionally i do but it feels weird right yeah when you come to know something is one thing for as long as we did yeah it's twitter it's tweeting it's retweeting Xing, yeah, no. Xing, no Xing sounds like a little too adult, maybe. Yeah, something we for can't a family do on the program. Air. Yes, yes. If we if we showed any Xing, we'd get an FCC complaint, and we'd be in deep doo doo with Greg. Yeah, and you have to say doo doo, especially considering I I just took that training not too long ago, and I learned what you know what can go out over the air. Oh, did you? Yeah. Now was it a video that the FCC? It was a bunch of videos. Or? It's yeah, it's from our legal department. Ah. Uh-huh. Are there any really cool recreations of somebody saying something, an actor that they shouldn't on air, and then a producer dramatically pressing the dump button? No, not necessarily. It's more like uh, slideshows, and then they ask you questions. I've only had to do it a couple times, and every time I've done it, well, no, that's not true. Someone did swear once on the program, and they felt really bad about it. Mm-hmm. But a few times it's been because I wasn't sure. Yeah. That's you know? the thing. It's like when in doubt hit the dump that's what they teach you yeah yes it's all about protecting our license here at the station fingers crossed fingers crossed henry we only have an hour left to go to try to not screw it up actually about uh, 49 minutes give or take with some commercials mixed in with with some commercials worked in there (laughs) again youtube.com backslash at 1210 wphd give us a like Make sure you share. Um, (laughs) The juice is no longer loose, Henry. That was one of this week's big storylines. The juice is now six feet under, uh, potentially in some place uh, considerably hotter than Philadelphia was today. I think that's the consensus. Miami. (laughs) (laughs) Have you ever been to Miami? I think Miami is kind of hellish. A little bit. I mean, the humidity can get to you. It's humid. It's overpriced. Yeah. It's, I was, I went one time for spring break, Mm -hmm. uh, you know. In your heyday? In my, well, I never really had a heyday. Uh, Don't sell yourself In in my my slightly less pathetic day (laughs) would be the better way to put it. And uh, it didn't, it didn't really do a whole lot for me. But hey, listen, God, God bless them, right? Somebody's got to love every place. But um, yeah, yeah. No, I'm referring, of course, uh, to hell, um, the actual hell, the biblical hell, because most people believe that O.J. killed his ex-wife and her boyfriend, Ron Goldman, way back in the 1990s. Now, you you definitely weren't around for this one, Henry, but I remember 
as a younger Matt Rooney. We're not talking about like going to Miami and spring break younger Matt Rooney. We're talking like little Matt Rooney in grade school. I was at St. John's Elementary, and my teacher at the time rolled a television into the classroom. And this is when televisions were about as wide as they were tall, right? There was no such thing as a flat screen. And I don't know if you ever saw one of these when you're in school. The television is attached via a strap. Oh, believe me. I, I went to, to the Catholic roll, school. The push we, cart. we didn't get any flat screens while I was there, believe me. Yes. So they rolled this thing out, and we watched the O.J. Simpson version. I remember this as clear as day. I also remember seeing television footage of the chase, the Bronco chase, when OJ and his friend were racing down a highway out there in California with a small fleet of police cars behind them. We had never had anything like this before in American culture, a news story that everyone was glued to their television every day for at least an hour, some people four hours to see how it turned out. The story itself was obviously sensational, but what it did to America and how we digest news is long lasting. The stakes were well beyond the issues in that particular that particular prosecution. And I don't mean to diminish the lives lost by saying that, but I don't think you're going to find anybody disagreeing that news was covered differently post OJ, right? But, you know... <laughs> It wasn't just how we cover news that changed with the O.J. Simpson trial. The trial of the century is what it was called at the time. It was also, in some ways, the birth of critical race theory and social justice and this whole idea that disparities, alleged disparities in our justice system justified not seeing justice through if the alleged perpetrator was black or at least not white, right? And you've now since had people admit that they were actively hoping that OJ would get off, not that they thought that he was innocent, but because of their disdain for the justice system, and in particular the LAPD at that time. This wasn't long after Rodney King, you'll remember, for people that were that are old enough to remember such a thing. Amazingly, there are many that, that are now not old enough to remember Rodney King. But if, if you don't believe me, let's see. I think we got some clips here. Well, here's the first one I want to share with you. Because whenever there, <laughs> whenever anything's going on, I was going to say when something crazy is going on. It doesn't have to be crazy. Whenever anything is happening, you can always count on Corrine Jean-Pierre to say the wrong thing. That's what she does. Never has anyone been worse at their job than this White House press secretary serving under Joe Biden, uh, she made, uh, I think, not, I don't think this was an error. I think this was intentional. When asked to comment on the O.J. Simpson, the passing of O.J. Simpson, she didn't at all express any condolences for the family of O.J.'s victims. She expressed her condolences only to O.J.'s family. Listen to this. Was there any reaction from the president to O.J. Simpson's death? Do you know if they ever crossed paths? So, if so, how, when? So I'll say this, our thoughts are with uh, are with his families during this difficult time, obviously with his family and loved ones. Uh, and I'll say this, I know that they have asked for some privacy, uh, and so we're going to respect that. I'll just leave it there. Yeah. Uh, O.J.'s family's privacy is the most important thing right now. No mention of Nicole Brown's family, the Goldman family, right? These These families who suffered the worst tragedy you could ever imagine having their loved one murdered in cold blood. Again, some might think that that was just a sloppy error on her part. I don't think so, right? We're dealing with someone who is a radical herself, Corrine Jean-Pierre. She's given interviews expressing that she believes that she herself is historic because she's not white, and she is in this position as White House press secretary. I, I I think that she's an OJ sympathizer, regardless of whether she thinks Henry he's innocent or not, because he's black and she believes the justice system is crooked, and therefore it's a good thing that a black man was able to beat the system. See, I, I think it's just more of her incompetence again. I also think it's a very uh, kind of tough question to answer. Well, it is it is does have a very complicated legacy. I mean, I get it. He, he killed two people, but 
Well, I mean, that's the thing, right? I mean, I, I plenty of people loved OJ before it turned out that he was a murderer, right? But, I mean, is it really that complicated after we found out what he did? Yeah. I mean, plenty of really evil people at one point did something kind of nice, right? I mean, you know. <laughs> I, I think a, a good no comment would have sufficed there. Yeah, or, or just say, listen, this is a horrible chapter in American history, you know, and we hope that the you know, the victims' families can find some solace. I mean, how hard is that? I just did it. And I'm not the White House press secretary. But I'm a little more cynical than you, Henry, and I have, I have another exhibit to introduce to back me up here. This is CNN's Ashley Allison. She appeared this week on the failing cable news network talking about how OJ, quote, represented something for the black community, end quote, because two white people were killed. Yes, you heard that correctly, but it, you don't have to take my word for it. Listen to this clip. A lot of these breaks. Ashley Allison, uh, can you take us into, I mean, he touched on how this really did divide the country in racial ways, kind of what the meaning of this was from that perspective. Yeah, I mean, I posted something on social media last night about what was your conversation in your home in 1995 when the verdict came down and what was it last night when we found out OJ died? And I, my premise is that it's still rooted on race. And the issue is the reason why that ch case was so charged. Um, I, too, got to watch the verdict in eighth grade. Um, this, this, is, this is in ours class. Um, and I saw it happening. I cheer. I was happy. I don't think I had a concept of, like, who was guilty and who was not. I was a child. You know, I probably shouldn't have been watching the case about two people being killed at the end of the day. Um, but it was so racially charged because of what had happened uh, just before with Rodney King, but also just how... Black Americans feel about policing. It's not like O.J. Simpson was the, the leader of the civil rights movement of his era. You right. know, he wasn't a social justice leader, but he represented something for the black community in that moment, in that trial, particularly because there were two white people who had been killed. And the, the history around how black people have been persecuted um, during slavery, there were, there were just so many layers. And I guess I would just close with this is that there was racial tension then, there is racial tension now. It might not be the backdrop of the Trump campaign, but until this country is ready to actually have an honest conversation about the racial dynamics from our origin story till today, we will always have moments like O.J. Simpson that manifest, and our country will always be divided if we don't actually deal with the issue of race. Yeah. So let me try to follow that for a second. Until we're ready to have a honest discussion concerning our origin story, which I'm not sure she drew the same lessons from our origin story that you or I might have, that we're always going to have instances like this where, where people want somebody to get away with murder because of the color of their skin. Seriously? That was exhibit A. Let me give you exhibit B here. This is an article from The Wrap. I'll, I'll tweet this out, Henry. I'm not going to post it. I'm going to tweet it Good on X. There was an interview back in 2016, June 2016, with O.J. Simpson juror Carrie Bess, who's black, okay? And there was an excerpt aired on Fresh Air, okay, that they covered from a documentary about the O.J. Simpson trial, in which this juror, Ms. Bess, who was in her 70s at the time, she was asked whether there were members of the jury that voted to acquit O.J. because of Rodney King. And without missing a beat, this juror said yes. And later on in the interview, she admitted that she was one of them. So, <laughs> what can you say, right? I mean, if you take all of the social justice arguments we've heard in recent years at face value, you could be tricked into believing that these leftists behind these movements are after justice, equality, all of these buzzwords, right? That they love to throw around to the point where they almost appear as if they lose their meaning. Well, maybe that's because they don't understand the true meaning of words like justice. The whole point of a justice system that functions correctly is that it is fair because justice is applied equally and blindly. There's a reason why Lady Justice, if you've ever been to a courthouse and you've seen her statue, has a blindfold over her eyes, right? 
It's not because she's been taken hostage. It's not because she's kinky. It's because justice is supposed to be blind. It's not supposed to take account of certain superficialities like the color of someone's skin. But that's exactly what happened in the OJ trial. OJ got off and literally got away with murder because jurors wanted to get payback for the perceived injustice of the Rodney King debacle. Did that further the cause of black America? Did that move us closer to a juster, freer, more equal society? I mean, I, I, I don't think so. I think all it did is create more divisions and let a murderer off the hook. Again, it wasn't just how news was covered changing that made OJ significant. It was very much the beginning of this social justice stuff. And the country has never quite recovered. Right, we, We've continued to journey further and further down this rabbit hole. So as tragic as the deaths of hu- two human beings is, independent of who's doing the killing, the damage that O.J. Simpson, of all people, inflicted upon this country goes much deeper than even the deeds that were perpetrated on that night out there in California back in the 1990s when two individuals lost their lives. 855-839-1210 is the number 1210WPHT over on YouTube, youtube.com backslash at 1210WPHT. I am Matt Rooney. This is the Matt Rooney Show. Quick break. Back with more in a moment. Don't move a muscle. Kale and Company weekday mornings, 6 till 10. Soccer did imbibe with Rand and Yes, Dom. a little. I mean, we everyone in the back, they were all, we were all pouring some, some yeah. bourbon. There was a debate on which bourbon it would be. What, what did it wind up being? The main one was Woodford, but there were a bunch of really, really nice Kentucky bourbons that people gifted Rand yeah. Paul. Probably bourbons that make Woodford look like yep. Bankers yep, Club. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. Well, we're the producers, so yeah, here you go. You yeah. get what? I mean, it's good. No, it's Woodford's good. a good Yeah, yeah. no, it was, yeah. yeah 38, Woodford's 39 good. bucks. That's quality stuff. Start your day with Kale and Company. Weekday morning, 6 till 10. On Talk Radio 1210, WPHD, and the free Odyssey app. Hi, this is Dom Giordano. If you're dealing with inflammation or stiff joints, then Glyco Plus from Rescue Natural Supplements can be your ticket to a healthier spring. Glyco Plus features a unique blend of green lipped muscle complex and UC2 collagen, specifically designed to support joint health. Collagen, a vital component of joint cartilage, plays a crucial role in maintaining strength and flexibility. And right now, Rescue Glyco Plus is buy one, get one free for anyone with our exclusive radio code. Just use the code RELIEF to double up your order for free. Again, that's R-E-L-I-E-F. Call them today at 800-26-LIVE, 800-262-5483. Speak to a knowledgeable rescue product consultant. You can also use the code online when you visit res-q.com. R-E-S-Q.com. Get back into action with less pain and more comfort. Again, use the code RELIEF. Buy one, get one free on Rescue Glyco Plus. This is Dr. Marianne Ritchie. Tune in to your radio doctor every Saturday afternoon at 5 here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT for the latest healthcare news and information because your health is your wealth. That's your radio doctor, Saturdays at 5. Pastor Brad Lacey here, First Baptist Church, Conshohocken. Join us Saturdays for the great message and be blessed. 5 a.m. right here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHD. We gathered real Pennsylvania seniors and asked them how they would benefit from an extra $1,000. Here's what they had to say. Everything is so expensive these days. Car expenses, repairs. My groceries, heating costs. My medications. Sure, I could easily spend $1,000 by that. Through Pennsylvania's property tax rent rebate program, eligible seniors and adults with disabilities could receive up to $1,000. Check your eligibility and apply online. Paid for with Pennsylvania taxpayer dollars. At California Psychics, we know that nagging doubts like, how much will a psychic cost? And how will I find the right one can stop you from getting the guidance you need? That's why we offer the best psychics at the best value. California psychics have a wide range of psychics available 24 seven. So you can find the one that meets your needs and your budget. If you can't decide our dedicated customer service team are always available to guide you right now. New customers receive 20 minutes for just $20. And what do you know? Most of our customers get everything they need from a reading within that time. 
Our psychics may surprise you with their ability to offer unique insight on your life situation. In fact, we guarantee if your reading isn't life-changing, it's free. So there's never been a better time to take the next step. Visit CaliforniaPsychics.com and experience the joy of certainty. California Psychics. Don't miss Good News in Real Estate with Deanne Katsaros and Mark Cumberland, Saturdays at 1 p.m. Find out all you need to know about home buying and selling. Considering a career in real estate? Visit PhiladelphiaRealEstateClasses.com. Good News in Real Estate, Saturdays 1 p.m. on WPHT. Dawn Stensland here for Anderson Mechanical Corporation. AMC, yet yeah, they're the people to trust to keep your home comfortable. The owners are great guys. Carrie and Bill take pride in doing things the right way. And that includes finding the best and most cost-effective solutions. Their experienced professional team will treat your home as if it's their own home. Prepare your AC for hot weather by taking advantage of their spring tune-up special. Visit amcontheweb.com, amcontheweb.com. Dawn sent you. Be sure to follow Talk Radio 1210 WPHT on the free Odyssey app. Download it now. Donald Trump getting ready for his first criminal trial on Monday. So he's got plenty on his mind and on his hands. But he took time over the weekend to offer a formal endorsement of Speaker Johnson. Speaker Johnson, you may recall, facing, (laughs) what is this, the third one we've been through? Facing a vote to have him removed as Speaker, Um, being a Republican. Speaker of the House is quickly becoming a job that I don't think anyone would ever want under any circumstance because the benefits are meh, but your lifespan is a few weeks because the majority that the Republicans enjoy in the House continues to shrink and there seems to be no pleasing the caucus. But Trump, perhaps realizing this, is throwing in behind the Speaker. They were down at Mar-a-Lago this weekend. This is cut number three. We're getting along very well with the speaker and I get along very well with Marjorie. Uh, We have a speaker. uh, He was voted in and it was a complicated process. And uh, I think very uh, it's not uh, not an easy situation for any speaker. I think he's doing a very good job. He's doing uh, about as good as you're going to do. And uh, I'm sure that Marjorie understands that. She's a very good friend of mine. And I know she has a lot of respect for the speaker. No, I- Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure about that last part. I don't know how much respect Marjorie Taylor Greene has for anyone. But, I'm, you know, some people would, would say and have said in the wake of Trump's comments that it was kind of a weak endorsement. He's doing, he's doing as good a job as anyone could expect to do. I think you should take that at face value, Henry, because the guy's got a majority of like two on any given day. What do people really want him to accomplish? Right? I mean, what what kind of transformative conservative change are you expecting when Democrats control the White House? Democrats control the United States Senate? You know, conservatives kind of sort of have a majority on the Supreme Court, but it's John Roberts's Supreme Court, so you never know what's going to happen on any given day. I mean, well, what do you what do you want this guy to do? And yes, as a as a fellow extremely handsome man with glasses and a nice head of hair, I am a little partial to Speaker Johnson. I will admit to my bias, Henry. You got to stick together. You got to stick together, right? Us four eyes need to need to watch out for each other. But I, you know, it, that's the question that I've yet to hear a critic of this speaker articulate. I understand why people didn't like Kevin McCarthy. We can we can relitigate that one until we're blue in the face. Whether or not he was effectively using the Republican majority he had, albeit a narrow one, to advance the cause. 
and to appropriately message for the party down there on Capitol Hill. But at this point, I mean, what what do you what do you want this guy to do? That he's not already doing. I think I think I think Trump was not offering, at least not deliberately, watered down praise. I think Trump was literally telling people, listen, lay off. We can only expect so much until November when hopefully, if Republicans play their cards right, they have an expanded majority in the House of Representatives. That that obviously is very much in doubt. We'll see what happens. As of today, the 2024 generic congressional ballot is relatively close. It does show Republicans with a 1.6 point advantage over Democrats, which does which does bode well. But we all know it's more complicated than that, right? We know there are a number of factors in these individual districts, candidate quality, are Republicans able to master vote by mail, the ever-present post-Roe v. Wade abortion issue, which can affect turnout. And sometimes it's not always captured by a poll. So, I, look, I, <laughs> I am not known as someone who ever tells anyone to lay off on the establishment. I think that lighting a fire under our elected leaders is the only way to often get the results that we, the people, deserve. But in this particular case, if Marjorie Taylor Greene was here in this studio, I would ask her candidly, besides raising a lot of money for herself, what does she realistically hope to accomplish with this? It's lost on me. And that's always my starting point. I often assume, Henry, conspiracy before incompetence or incompetence before conspiracy, right? I usually assume that somebody's doing something stupid just because they're stupid right. or they're not thinking it through rather than there's, there's vast, you know, plan to do something nefarious, but I can't come up with a good faith explanation for this one, which is usually how I evaluate. It. All right. So then chalk it up to incompetency then. Maybe, maybe it's just, just, just one of those things. You can't figure it out. Maybe it's just, it's so stupid. Possibly. So stupid. You can't even begin to comprehend it. Possibly. I'll I'll strain and hurt my formidable brain in the process. <sighs> All right. Well, let's let's put a pin in that for now. Donald Trump endorsed Speaker Johnson. He also blamed Joe Biden for the many crises that are brewing overseas during his remarks down at Mar-a-Lago standing alongside the speaker. This is cut number one, Donald Trump weighing in on the latest conflagrations overseas. This is a very dangerous period of time in our nation and a big reason that it's dangerous that we have a president that's grossly incompetent. So there you go. Donald Trump Donald Trump Henry assuming incompetence before a conspiracy. Following the theorem there. Yeah. He knows what's up. Yeah. And look, I, I, I think that's the case, right? And I'm going to get in trouble for saying this. I mean, obviously the Biden crime family is compromised, right? We, we know that they took money from bad people overseas. The only question is how much Joe knows. We know he knew quite a bit, right? But what promises were extracted by these foreign interests in exchange for the money? That's the part that we still hopefully one day we'll get to the bottom of. But generally speaking, I mean, like, do I think, for example, that Joe Biden wants Iran to be emboldened and to kill Israelis and to threaten world peace? I mean, maybe I'm still a little naive, even after all I've been exposed to. But I, I, don't, I don't know if that's the case. I think, I think these guys are genu genuinely naive. We talked about it at the open of the program today. They have a foggy bottom mindset. They come from a world that is so different than what you'd experience on the streets of Tehran that they just can't wrap their minds around how dictators and despots and radicals think, and therefore they're unable to deter them. You have to understand how your enemy thinks if you want to defeat them. What do, can we possibly expect from Joe Biden, who has not only been wrong on every major point of foreign policy during his long public career. This is a guy who's been in D.C. over five decades, folks. To be wrong that long, that consistently, consistently is a feat in of itself. 
But now that the guy barely knows his own name, what really was anyone expecting? What were you hoping for? I don't know. This segment's full of things that I just don't have an answer to. All right, well, moving on for a second. Let's move on to something. Do we have to take a break, Henry? No. We're good? All right, well, I want to move on to something a little more fanciful, if I may. Okay. A little more. You got a little excited there for a second. It's not that fun. Don't get too excited. Uh, Yeah, just shifting gears a little bit from the seriousness of, you know, Joe Biden starting World War III. Uh, J.K. Rowling has been in the news recently, right, because she's been standing up to a new law in Scotland that essentially criminalizes free speech in the arena of LGBTQ, ABC, one, two, three, plus, minus a tilde, right? And she's been taking some heat from Harry Potter stars, specifically Daniel Radcliffe, who played Harry Potter, and Emma Watson, who played Harmony Granger. And according to Breitbart.com, J.K. Rowling is not ready to forgive these kids who she quite literally gave everything to. According to Breitbart, the reality is we have no good evidence on the long-term outcomes of interventions such as puberty blockers to manage gender-related stress. That's pediatrician Hillary Cass. It is unusual for us to give potentially life-changing treatment to young people and not know what happens to them in adulthood. So Rowling, I guess, is supportive of this. And over on X, celebrated this particular report and pushed back against the left for trying to peddle a false narrative. Over the last few years, Hillary Cass has conducted the most robust review of the medical evidence for transitioning children that's ever been conducted. Mere hours after it was released to the press and public, committed ideologues are doubling down. That's what Rowling wrote over on X, and she proceeded to refer to efforts to try to transition children to child abuse. Later on, though, a commentator said that Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson should give you a very public apology, safe in the knowledge that you will forgive them. Not safe, I'm afraid. Celebs who cozied up to a movement intent on eroding women's hard run rights and who use their platform to cheer on the transitioning of minors can save their apologies for traumatized detransitioners and vulnerable women relying on single-sex spaces. Rowling responded. So Rowling feeling a little salty towards two kids who have been very critical of her. And let's face it, Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson. Emma Watson's done a couple notable things in the entertainment space since Harry Potter. Daniel Radcliffe, not as much. I think he starred in a couple movies. None of them have been blockbusters. He's done some... some stage stuff don't you don't think the weird al movie is a blockbuster i'm afraid not henry i don't think that that qualifies Jeez, tough crowd tough crowd right i'm a fan of weird al sure just not of the weird al movie to be clear have you seen it i watched part of it and stopped isn't it very tongue-in-cheek like tight i don't think it understood what its tone was okay i think that was part of the problem with that movie it didn't know if it was Tongue in cheek, or if it wanted to be more dramatic, it. I think it was trying to be a little bit of both, just, yeah, all tongue in cheek. And it did not work. But, I mean, (laughs) here's the point these two young people would be nothing. No one would know who they were were it not for J.K. Rowling. Now, I'm not a believer that someone doing you a solid at some point in your history means that you are indebted to them for a lifetime and no matter what crazy stuff they say you have to go along with it but jk rowling's opinions on transgenderism and feminism in particular because remember jk rowling ain't no conservative right she's pushing back against this stuff because a she genuinely believes it's garbage right um which is saying something for someone that wrote a book about like kids practicing magic that she thinks that this is like hocus pocus right But she also thinks it's anti-feminism, which we know it's true, right? Saying that men can be women both symbolically and in real life, particularly on the sports field, robs women of what makes women women, right? It is an invasion of their space. So she's rightly quite annoyed by this, and it's an opinion that is not a minority opinion. Lots of people believe this. 
This isn't a fringe view she's espousing. So for these two little ingrates to take shots at the woman that made them both gazillionaires, to me, it's unforgivable. Like, I actually thought everybody's making a big deal of J.K. Rowling saying I don't forgive them. I would have been way harsher if I were her. I would have said, listen, these two people, right, who only have celebrity because I made them celebrities because of the stuff that I wrote, right, need to check themselves, need to check their privilege, and maybe have a conversation with me before calling me a bigot. Maybe she didn't want to make it that personal. But I thought she could have been harsher, Henry. Interesting. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not really sure about uh, you know, the whole thing. I don't see how to feel about it. It's just I don't know. It's just it's like Twitter fingers. I really don't care. Twitter fingers. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean that's that's all it is right now. You're just you know arguing passive aggressively over Twitter and like through your publicists. It's like eh, who cares? Yeah, and look, I mean, generally speaking, I could take it a step further. I I generally and genuinely don't care about celebrities. I'm not impressed by people just because they're famous. Everyone gets bent out of shape or is inspired. The ultimate example is Taylor Swift, right? You have legions of women in this country that are waiting for Taylor Swift to tell them who to vote for. The idea that you care what a singer is doing in an election or going to somehow be influencing your own decision by what he or she are going to do blows my mind as a free-thinking individual. To me, the reason why this whole Harry Potter thing is significant is because it goes to show you how warped people are by these leftist ideologies to the point where they would get nasty with somebody they owe so much to. As a conservative, there are plenty of people I don't agree with, not just in the public sphere, but in my personal life. Doesn't make me want to throw them under the bus for it or be mean to somebody that's done a lot for me for no reason other than that I have different politics than they do. But these young leftists don't feel that way. They, they feel as strongly about their ideology as some terrorists feel about their ideology. It's, it's, it's kind of scary, truthfully. And it's one of the reasons why we're having trouble having a civil society in 2024. We've talked about it a lot on the Matt Rooney Show. You can't have religious attachment to your political worldview. You can't. Politics is important because policies have a real world impact on all of us, including our families, our communities, our jobs, whatever, right? But it's, it's not religion. You have to be able to allow your political views to be challenged by fact and debate. Because if you don't, you end up in the current environment we're in right now, which is, I mean, saying it's unproductive is probably once again a little too euphemistic. It's, it's, it's much worse than that. 855-839-1210 is the number over on YouTube, youtube.com backslash at 1210WPHT. Follow final break of the evening. And then we'll be back to close out the Matt Rooney show in a moment. See you in a sec. Kale and Company weekday mornings, 6 till 10. Soccer did imbibe with Rand and Yes, Dom. a little. I mean, we everyone in the back, they were all, we were all pouring some, some yeah. bourbon. There was a debate on which bourbon it would be. What, what did it wind up being? The main one was Woodford, but there were a bunch of really, really nice Kentucky bourbons that people gifted yeah. Rand Paul. Probably bourbons that make Woodford look like yep. Bankers yep. Club. Pretty much, that. yeah. yeah. Well, we're the producers, so yeah, here you go. You yeah. get what? I mean, it's good. No, it's Woodford's still good. a good Yeah, yeah. no, it was, yeah. yeah. 38, bucks. That's quality stuff. Start your day with Kale and Company. Weekday mornings, 6 till 10. On Talk Radio 1210, WPHT, and the free Odyssey app. Are you a victim of the timeshare trap and think there's no way out? I'm Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group, the original timeshare cancellation expert. And I'm here to tell you that there is a way out. All you need to do is give my office a call. I will send you a timeshare exit information kit absolutely free, explaining how the timeshare industry works and your options for cancellation. Call Wesley now for your free info kit, 800-790-1400, 800-790-1400. Don't miss the Education Show with Dom Giordano every Sunday morning at 530. Find out how you can help your child or grandchild succeed. Sponsored by New Hope Academy.
QC Kinetics announces the arrival of National Medical Director Dr. Mitchell Scheinkup, an acclaimed orthopedic surgeon with two decades of experience and extensive research in regenerative medicine. I was one of the first orthopedic surgeons to do it. And at the same time, I integrated clinical research that's resulted in several publications that are really directing the future of regenerative medicine. I was drawn to QC Kinetics after I reviewed their protocols and everything they were doing is consistent with my own approach. Today, Dr. Scheinkup leads the entire team of medical professionals at QC Kinetics, taking this exciting medical breakthrough to a whole new level. What we are doing at QC Kinetics is transforming lives. Get lasting joint pain relief. Call QC Kinetics now for your free consultation. This is the future of medicine. Call QC Kinetics, 215-999-3000. That's 215-999-3000. 215-999-3000. Join us at Odyssey as we all do our one thing, together millions of things for our planet. Earth Day is April 22nd. Replace your current shower head with a low-flow shower head to save water for years to come. What's your one thing? If you're drowning in IRS debt and can't afford to pay, then you need to take advantage of special IRS tax programs that are available and free yourself from IRS collection efforts once and for all. Due to the financial hardship consumers are facing throughout the country, the Internal Revenue Service has made it easier to settle delinquent tax problems. An open phone line has been established by Community Tax for consumers to call and see if they qualify. Take down this number or store it in your cell phone, but call the Community Tax Helpline at 800 514 1020 If you owe back taxes to the IRS and cannot afford to pay them back, or even if you have years of unfiled tax returns, there's no need to fear anymore. But you have to call the Community Tax Helpline today at 800-514-1026 for the help that you need. Don't take on the IRS alone. They can attack your wages, savings, pension, home, and even your Social Security check. Call 800-514-1026 for your free consultation and to see if you qualify. That's 800-514-1026. Hey, Ambler. We know your favorite station is Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Follow us anywhere on the free Odyssey app. Over in the YouTube chat on tonight's Matt Rooney show, Secret Squirrel. The shadow government is not incompetent. It's a fair point. Joe Biden is incompetent. I think many of the people around Joe Biden are incompetent. I don't think I know. Let's speak in a declarative way here because we know it to be the truth. But, but it is true that there are plenty of bad actors in the deep state that benefit from chaos, particularly when chaos benefits the military-industrial complex, right? Something that Eisenhower warned us about darn near a century ago now, and we haven't really learned the lessons. And I, you know, I think it's a point that maybe Donald Trump needs to hit a little bit harder in the weeks ahead. A vote for Joe Biden is a vote to send future generations of Americans overseas to fight in wars that could have been avoided if this country exhibited the strength that it once did. And I think this is a point a lot of people miss or misunderstand, maybe on purpose, even some folks on the right side of the aisle. I think I'm a fairly typical Trump voter, okay? I do not think that the United States should just unilaterally disengage from the world. Right. I don't think we should be unconcerned by Russian aggression. I certainly don't think we should abandon Israel to its fate, surrounded by hundreds of millions of enemies. This little democracy outnumbered in the middle of the Middle East. I'm not I'm not I'm not in any way saying that. What I am saying is that the way you win wars is to avoid them to begin with. That is the best way to win a war. And you win a war. By avoiding war through strength. Whether it's Teddy Roosevelt sending the white fleet around the world 
over a century ago to project American strength, whether it be Ronald Reagan during the Cold War, right, and the buildup of our arms and our military and his Star Wars experiment. You can find all sorts of examples. When we are strong and we embrace our strength, bad people take notice and the world is a safer place. When that's not the kind of leadership we have in Washington, D.C., again, when you're done with tonight's program, turn on your news, any cable news station, it doesn't matter, before you go to bed, and you'll see what happens. You don't need me to outline it for you on the radio. You can see it with your eyes. You can hear it with your ears. All your senses are being bombarded by examples of Joe Biden's failures. But again, as I opened up with tonight, there is some some hope that maybe people are starting to get it. There's a New York Times poll I mentioned earlier, along with Siena College, that's their usual partner for these things, where they, and in their report, their explanation of this report, they gave Donald Trump, Trump a little bit of grudging um, good news here. You know, they didn't want to admit that there was positive, a positive story for President Trump in this poll, which is why, you know, the headline says four years out, some voters look back at Trump's presidency more positively. But it's actually really, really good news for Donald Trump. Um, (laughs) Approval of his handling of the economy from 2020 to now, Henry, uh, up 10 points. Think he left the country better off, up nine points. Approve of his handling of maintaining law and order, up eight points versus when he left office in 2020. Approve of his handling of unifying America, even went up four points. The only thing that went down, according to this New York Times poll, is think he respects women, <laughs> which let's let's assume for argument's sake that that's an accurate result. I mean, what do you want? Unjustly, the guy is being bombarded on the airwaves with all of these nonsense stories like that Gene Carroll trial, right, um, in which Donald Trump is being accused of all kinds of horrific things for women concerned without any evidence. Never had, I'll tell you what, Gene Carroll's attorneys, right? Oh my God. I mean, never have lawyers done more with, with less, right? I mean, I don't, well, yeah, right. I mean, Johnny Cochran doesn't have anything on her attorneys. (laughs) Rest in peace, Johnny. Seriously. But look, I mean, you know, back, back to the, the Trump angle here for a second. Think electing him is a safe choice. This is a biggie. Up 11 points. Wow. Remember, Donald Trump only lost 2020 with by a handful of votes. Tens of thousands of votes spread over multiple battleground states. So these seismic shifts in how he's perceived really could be the difference in November. I'm not here to predict the Trump victory. I'm not telling you how it's going to turn out. I'm in no way trying to lull you into a, a false sense of security or even telling you that, you know, he's winning right now. Who knows what would happen if we hypothetically had this presidential election tomorrow? I'm just, I'm just telling you that if, as you attempt to read the tea leaves here, something has happened out there. Despite the best attempts of the media and the left to besmirch this man, smear this man, run him through the mud, literally deprive him of his life's work. By taking his buildings away, his money away. They want to put him in prison. They're going to start that this week. That project begins in earnest when his first criminal trial begins. But I don't know if they're succeeding. There's a a final test for that. We have an election in November. But as of now, you have to objectively say, if the goal was to try to destroy Trump in the court of public opinion, it's it's backfired, at least at present. How he will hold up under an endless barar, barrage of coverage of these trials, I don't know. I think it would behoove Republicans, and I'm not here to give free consulting advice to either party, but I'll do it anyway here. You know, as you have your senses bombarded by endless coverage of these Trump trials, I think Republicans and Trump supporters need to point out, listen, While the world is literally on fire, people cannot afford groceries. This is what they want you to focus on. They're clearly trying to distract you from the failures of the Biden administration. I think that's a winning argument. But arguments can only be won if you make them. 
That's the key, right? You have to make the argument if you have any hope of winning it. And Republicans have to be bold. They have to be brave. And we've talked a lot about minority voters, non-white voters on the program tonight. One thing you have to do if you're going to win this year is you have to be willing to go and have that discussion with people that Republicans have traditionally been afraid to talk about politics with. I'll put it, I'll put it very simply. Right? That's what a lot of this is. Republicans have been afraid to go into black and brown communities to discuss politics, touch third rails, discuss difficult issues, because they're told that not only are they hated in those communities, but anything that is said in that venue that departs from liberal orthodoxy is somehow racist, bigoted, whatever. No, that's not true. Voters in these communities, long neglected, often abused and taken for, for granted by the Democrat Party, are, are probably ready now to hear a different narrative. They're ready to hear something. But somebody has to be willing to go there. I saw a great video, and I wanted to grab the audio for tonight, but it doesn't really do it justice. you got to watch the video. Trump was in a Chick-fil-A in Atlanta. Did you see this? Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, my God. It was like, it it was unbelievable. Milkshakes for everybody. You would have thought it was Inauguration Day, though, right? (laughs) How he was being greeted by black Americans, white Americans. And this is, keep in mind, this is Georgia which ain't Jersey or Philadelphia, but it's Atlanta. Yeah, Atlanta's blue. And they were loving them, man. They were loving them. You got you to gotta meet people where they are. And if you do that with the right candidate and the right message, you, can be surpri- you will be surprised by what happens. And Donald Trump is very much an example of that. He made it happen in 2016. We can do it again in 2024. That we have to be bold. We have to be brave. Well, Henry, I think that's enough for one program. Three hours are up. Time flies when you're having fun, my friend. We could always use another. Could we do four hours? I think so. The content you've lined up, absolutely. Oh, you brown noser, you. We we didn't even get into, I don't know, the nitty gritty of things tonight. That is true. We have a lot left on the list. We always do every week. Extra stuff we want to get into. But that's just the way that it goes. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, you just got to leave them wanting a little bit more, Henry. (laughs) Come back next week. (laughs) Come back next week. Henry's like, oh, my God, I have to be back here next week. (laughs) But until next week, thank you very much for once again joining us here on the Matt Rooney Show. Thank you to our listeners, both the old-fashioned way on the radio and over on the Odyssey app. Thank you to everybody that watched on YouTube and over on X. Thank you to producer Henry Machette. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane. And keep fighting for this greatest nation in God's creation because it's worth it. Good night, everybody. Rich Zioli. So I just want to make sure my take on Woodrow Wilson is strong and clear and nobody is.